Okay, very, Hi. very slightly late. And again, my, my great apologies for that. <coughs> but let's have some reminders from last session. First up, exact quote, shit, we're sinking. Azim final blowed the Psyker, holding the city up. Uh, Koya tried to talk to the Psyker seconds before they were killed. Correlation is not causation, square brackets, in case anyone starts to pin this shit on us. I think that was a Carl note, if I recall correctly. Yep. <laughs> uh, check what the faster route ahead is. Koya is babysitting Quattlemox. Quattlemox is currently schlorped, which means Koya is babysitting th- uh, Thumbs. Uh, Mackie's babysitting, isn't he? Because uh, he was carrying him. Uh, no. Not Mackie's really leading there. the charge, I believe. I led him across the um, road. Yeah, whoever yeah. got the one, like, yeah. Yeah, that that's what I mean. Well, I thought that was oh, Okay, sorry, maybe that should be Mackie then. Uh, no, no, we're, sure, we're, we're, we're beelining it, aren't we? And, and I'm pretty sure that Mackie was leading because he has the highest strength to knock down walls. I know we got to the across the other side of the road and I saved Creed you via the, my one. The other side yeah. of the road and through, I think, a few Manufactoria. Mm. Yeah, I, may be, I may be looking after him just because you're the heavy weapons expert and we're probably going to need your gun. Yeah, some yeah that, that makes sense. That makes sense. Uh, first aid the sergeant when you're safe, if you're safe. Your overall objective is to escape, square brackets, probably to make it to Phasma uh, Spaceport to commandeer a vessel, and a Vox message has been sent out to tell people to meet at the spaceport if they can't get to Miranda's Beach safely. If you'll recall, your theory on going for the spaceport, even though it's further away, is that there will definitely be craft there, uh, and on top of that, that there isn't a huge defensive line between you and them. We'd have to fight our way to Miranda's Beach, and by the time we fought our way there, they, everyone might have left already. Exactly. I like the idea that there's a concept of safety on a falling Venusian hive city. Yeah. Said, Let's heal once we get to safety. I feel like nowhere's safe right now. <laughs> yeah, I think there was a fair amount of mocking laughter when that one was put down. I think it was, it was noted more in optimism than realism. <laughs> <laughs> well, it'll be safe in the transitory idea of been not being here anymore. That's true. Um... Cool, I'm happy then just to start... Tr- I, I don't know if I can drive through... Boy, I don't know if I can... Uh, no, I can only drive ground vehicles, I'm afraid. Uh, it's aer- operate aeronautica to get out of atmosphere rather than voidcraft. Of course it is, yeah. Um, which case I don't have either. Uh, I'm happy to start charging through walls, though. To be fair, I presume there will be people around the spaceport who can fly things, and we can always take them hostage at gunpoint and say, fly us out of here and we'll let you live. Yeah, it's probably not the worst sell in the world. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Should, should, I, um, should, I, should we go down the road, actually, rather than go through the buildings first, and then we go well, through the Remember, we're not going down the road because there is a hell of a lot of angry soldiers that want us dead because we just killed the okay. entire that, civilization. Uh, that was the main conveyor way, uh, main conveyor way primarily, the uh, road that you are... I don't think you actually busted through the wall to the road yet. You just, like, charged through a large manufactoria district. Um but that that road in the middle of Zone C is you actually don't have the intel on it at the moment, but it is presumably not quite as heavily log jammed as oh. the uh, main conveyor way was. Um, can I see any sort of uh, construction melters? I know that they do exist in the lore as like yeah, sure, why not? Like as mentioned, you're in an uh, an industrial zone. You I think had, had punched through like a series of manufactories. So there's a slew of industrial equipment surrounding you, as well as many increasingly terrified menials. Those of them not wearing masks already beginning to choke and die. Can I? Uh, yeah, can I grab one of the? Does any of them look like they have like a, a an implement, like a power pack or something attached to them? You know what, let's probably do a a check for this, shall we? Let's open some sheets also. I'm going to have to rely on other people to have their rulebooks open because with my machine and the state it's in, I do not want to go consulting the rulebooks, honestly. I have a rulebook open. That's fine. Cool, thank you. I'm just just letting you know. Yeah. I like how Benji looks like every single person in one of those sort of leaked Zoom meetings for like a county council meeting. But the head sort of down in the corner, like here. <laughs> Is this better? Yes, yeah. significantly. Oh, I've only got neck. You notice how my he- face looks okay. so much better the moment my facial hair starts to grow back. 
<laughs> oh, you do, you it do know that pale man. Fast, though. It, uh, I know, but it looks so much better the moment. You know what that else grows is coming back, back thick and fast? God damn it, <laughs> <laughs> Disco? <laughs> oh, I hope not. Disco is, yeah. I blame Wonder Woman. I, I can't wait until we get like Electro Disco. We had we've had Electro Swing. Why not Electro Disco? What about Electro it Rock? It's already electric, Ollie. I know, but I'm saying hey, like Electro Ollie. Disco. I don't like, think like you it, understand what the electro and disco and indeed I, electro I, swing. I'm, I'm well, I'm thinking, Anywho, Ollie, uh, what do you what do you fancy rolling for this? You're basically doing a sort of a search. Uh, Jesus, search is a skill. I, there's a value rate as well. <laughs> yeah, and search. I'm happy to go for search. Do we? Maybe I should risk one one copy of the rule book open. I'm I'm down for search. I think search um, would be more... Evaluate would be you're spending a lot of time evaluating something. Search sounds more like a quick action. So yeah, I strongly suspect with. that's correct, but um, I'm not, I'm I'm not fairly c- in this. I was going to say, I'm fairly certain evaluate is more like literally for goods and things like that. Oh, so that services. Sense, yeah. Skill list. Skill descriptors. Uh, carouse. Charm. Evaluate. Characters evaluate determine the approximate value, strength, or manufacture of an object or group of items. And it specially uses our weak points and solid cover. Um, oh, that's quite useful. Where search is... Scroll down a little bit more. That's more Medicaid Maybe pilot. The character uses the search skill to attempt to discover things that are physically hidden. Uh, search involves active investigation whereas awareness deals with passive or subconscious detection each search test covers a small room or area so awareness so it does, then? I mean it sounds like it would be search I would say because you're you're sort of actively scanning around the room I think cool um, this rolls off my f- um, and so- just, just to double check what are you what are you after here uh, I'm looking for some sort of melter that has a self-contained power pack uh, so I don't rip it off like a, a, an arm or something like yeah, that. Yeah, you don't want to like get something that's integrated into a servitor and you have to fight yeah. around with it. All right, fair. Yeah, I'll and take. I'm, I mean, it's an industrial environment, but it might be around. I'll take search at minus uh, search of a perception at minus fifteen. Minus fifteen. Can I? Do I get my heightened senses plus ten to sight and sound tests? Yes. Amazing. So minus five in total, thirty-five or under. That is I a make it. Of, that is a debt of plus five actually. I'll be able to. Oh, sorry, did you say, I thought you said minus 15. Uh, I did. Uh, minus 15 plus 20 is net. Oh, it's 10. It's 10, I think. Oh, is it 10? I thought it was 20. I think so. And Hans census is 10. Yeah. Oh, I stand corrected. Sorry. Cool. Uh, cool. What was your DOS there? Uh, that would be, I was 35 or under, so one degree of success. 28. Okay. Damn it, I can only have one open. Ah, rage. Oh, I'll see if I can stream a rulebook for you on Discord. No, it's fine. Streaming is probably also quite intensive. So <laughs> I don't I don't trust the power supply, basically. It's not been super regular. Uh, this is the spare, but it's not doing great. Yeah, I had an issue uh, a, uh, a year back when my PC just started turning itself off for no reason. And in the end, I just got work to buy me a new power supply. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> This is an old work PC that I uh, I got in a giveaway. <laughs> oh, nice. Oh, is it not the one then that you, uh, I, I kind of assumed you still had the one you had back in Guildford? Yeah, that, that died on Saturday. Oh, that's the one that died on Saturday. I see. I see. Uh, okay. Cool. So, sorry, I've immediately blanked again, Ollie. What was your DOS? Uh, one degree of success. One degree of success. Cool. <laughs> A terrified menial in the corner backs away from you. Your eyes lock onto them. Your HUD immediately flashes over, uh, flashes up, indicating an unfamiliar pattern of melter gun. What do? Uh, I am going to locate the melter gun and rip it out of whatever housing it's in, or just grab it, and I want to just take that oh, motherfucker. Uh, just to double check, how are you approaching the terrified menial with the anti-tank weapon? Um... I mean, I have a high enough fellowship that I'm aware that probably doing this is going to terrify me anyway, but I am going to just look at him and... Have I got charm trained? <laughs> while, he's, while he moves forward to try and charm the thing, can I just shoot the menial in the head? <laughs> My arm goes out when it goes through his head. Uh-oh, uh, 
Um, I also have a simultaneous action, but I'll let this resolve first, and then... Very fair. Yeah, you know, why not follow in the direction, uh, direction, follow in the footsteps of your sergeant. As someone else is attempting to engage in discourse, shoot them. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, wait, our menials are going to act like we act. This isn't going to end well. <laughs> yeah. Let's try talking, shoot. Uh. menials won't, your battle brothers will. Well, no, this isn't... Again, this isn't a situation for talking. This is a time-sensitive thing where, quite frankly, we haven't got the time to be talking to people. We need that melter gun, and we need it now. Exactly. Why the fuck not? Uh, yeah, I'll take ballistic skill at a plus ten, please. Uh, okay, that's going to be... Uh, do I get a standard attack bonus for this? Or Yeah, why not? It's not a difficult shot. Okay, which means I also get my plus ten. So that's... For bolt weapons, that is a success. Uh, one degree. Yeah, uh, lose whatever your minimum is, I guess a semi-auto's worth of ammunition from your bolt gun. As you blow the menial's head and upper chest away, they... I'm just going to use my bolt pistol, to be fair. That's, that's well, the I'm going out. Same I'm... situation for your bolt pistol, then. Yeah. <clears throat> That's the same effect. <laughs> Mackie is, yeah, Mackie is just about uh, reaching his hand out, attempting to calm the menial and maybe briefly explain that they don't mean don't need to kill him when the menial's upper body detonates. I'm assuming my upper torso is completely covered in blood and gore. No, you were quite a bit further away than that. Was I? Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, just, uh, just, just the guy's got a melter gun. <laughs> yeah, I, I turn to Koya. And I, I just look, and then I look back. I don't even say a word, and I pick up the melter gun. Yeah, you advance over and, and nab the melter gun and power pack. Yeah, okay, you can add uh, one poor quality... Well, for the sake of splat stats, we'll say it's a, an Astartes melter, uh, melter gun equivalent Vulcan pattern. Okay. Okay. Fuck it, overcharge the thing. It ain't like we need it long term. You <laughs> overcharge a melter gun. That is not a thing they do. Um, I didn't know what the pattern was. So, yeah, okay, I, I've got it now, Does, and this is fine for me to put my, um, I assume I have some way of mounting my Volkite on my back or something? Or you do to my not, back. actually, you do not. That means you are stuck using the basic category uh, melter gun two-handed. That said, it's made for a human, and you've got True Grit anyway, so you can use it one-handed. I've also got uh, recoil suppressors, so I can fire a basic weapon with one hand. Yeah, yeah that's fine. That exactly. works for me. Sorry, um, but just for clarity, like devastators generally do not have a way to put down their heavy weapon. That is why it qualifies as an Astartes level heavy weapon. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Um, okay, yeah, cool. I grab the uh, thingy, and I am just going to start. Um, I'm going to melt my way through the wall. I feel like that's probably the e is that quicker than me running through it. Probably. Yeah, I'm going to melt my way through it. Vaporizing your way through the wall, you and the rest of the squad emerge out onto the somewhat smaller but still fairly l Oh, sorry, yes, I stand corrected. Uh, Cusco had an action queued. What are we doing, Cusco? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to quickly see if I could apply first aid to uh, Brother Sergeant. Ooh, it's going to be a couple that. of minutes, I would say. Oh, okay, then, like, uh, cause, yeah, I'm not sure how long... Let's uh, just searching for doodad when. Let's just double check. Uh, not very long at all. It was uh, ah, okay. whole exchange took like thirty seconds, maybe forty tops. Just to double check, what level of crit damage are you at, here, Nicholas? Zero. Zero. I'm on zero health and zero <laughs> crit. I was. Yeah. It was. Hang on. So I haven't taken uh, anything crit wise. Okay. Cool. So you're not actually. You are at the minimum possible health you can be, and still not be that difficult to uh, perform first aid on. But it would take you. Yeah. It would only be a couple of minutes, but it would be a couple of minutes to give him first aid. I would say. No, that's okay then. I'll, I'll leave it for the moment. Yeah. Um. um the, the, the worst thing is like by the time well, I actually need it, it's gonna be too late. <laughs> it's like, like I have yeah. to hope to get there without getting hit. Basically. I mean, you're an Astartes. You're tough. Yeah, I've got I've got fate to burn, I guess. It's just that if one tiny bullet gets between one tiny vulcanized rubber yeah. thing. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm I'm like the fucking what, bird, the, the, the fucking uh, the dropships that we normally take in Dark Heresy. Your arm is still sealed. Just holding together. Just holding together. <laughs> no, because your arm is still sealed, right? You, you still have armor. Actually, yeah, just yeah. So, like. You're still going to have to get hit pretty damn hard to take you down in damage because you are still an Astartes in functional armor. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> well, hopefully we don't come across like a hundred enemies again. 
Uh, Ian, uh, Malkyoto Turk is going to do a quick ammo check on the industrial melter gun. I presume I have an idea of how much it's carrying. Let's take a speedy look. Uh, I'll, take tech, I'll take tech use at plus 20, as you are unfamiliar yeah. with the pad. No worries. I do not have tech use trained. So minus 20, so minus 40 in total, I believe, then. Uh, right, let's do this. I am rolling at a... Only, uh, you could ask Thumbs to do it. Thumbs oh. has tech use because he has all the attended skills that Creed had. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, no, he, he doesn't. He only has the plot relevant stuff. Yeah, but Creed was our techie boy, and we don't have our techie boy, so he would plot relevantly have the techie boy stuff. I'm with Ben. I, would, I wouldn't say so. Like Creed's wanting to be a tech boy eventually, but he doesn't like inherently carry the. Well, no, but he no, but he gets tech use because that's what he starts with. Because remember, we start, we picked our starting specializations. Uh, yeah, but Thumbs doesn't have a starting specialization. Thumbs is a background NPC. I'll roll the one. I'm rolling at a one or under anyway. If I get a one on this, I will knock my head thumbs, off. Thumbs in Cartborn didn't have all Carl's alchemy skills. Oh, so, so close. A five. So close. It's still only a degree of faded, and I suppose, actually. You look at it, you're not totally sure. You give the flask a shake. You give the other couple of flasks a shake. It feels kind of full, right? Like, there's got to be something in there. You're pretty confident you've got at least a few shots. Mm-hmm. Cool. I'm then going to start blasting my way through the walls, melting my way through them. Yeah, in the background, Cusco is giving like a, a speedy appraisal over the uh, biometrics from the sergeant and deciding, no, there's no time. <laughs> Shit, <fuck. laughs> You blast your way. Uh, would you like to record for me how many shots you've used, please, Ollie? And I'll check in intermittently and see what we're at. Uh, yeah, sure. I've used one so far, then. Yeah. So you blast through the wall that you're currently uh, that currently puts some distance between you and the conveyor way outside onto a scene of utter and complete panic. Toxic fumes from the Venusian atmosphere are beginning to seep into and onto the hive. And outside, hundreds, perhaps thousands of industrial workers are running every which way, screaming, many of them lying down, either in the fetal position or simply to shoot themselves. As they all begin to realize that doom has come for them. Well, I'm going to be their secondary doom and run through them. This is not our problem. All right, who's leading the charge? I'm happy to, and we yep. can go down this, this route here, I think. If that is all right with, with, with Brother Sergeant. Uh, I always forget your character's name. Nazim. 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 Oh, right. He who has now killed the Cloud District. Aww. Hey, hey. Shh. Hey, hey, shh, nothing. You shot the guy and dropped the Cloud District. No one shall there, get there to the Cloud no District proof. often, ever at all. There is, there is, is very fun? little proof that it's my fault. That it's him who is holding it up. Apart from all our helmet cameras. It was a mere coincidence, all right? <laughs> um, yeah, for the sake of Brother Sergeant Nazim, I'm going to take Rearguard. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So you're looking I... after Brother Sergeant Nazim. Koya is looking after Thumbs, who's occasionally screaming as he runs around the place, which uh, leaves us, yeah, with Mackie on point. I'm just going to run through the menials. I, I assume they pose little to no threat. Yeah, it's more of a slog than anything else. I will take... I'm not actually going to fire either of my weapons. I feel like they're going to be doing so little damage to me and so little anything. There's no point in even wasting ammo. It, it would honestly be basically pointless to fire your weapons anyway. You're dealing with a sea of uh, thousands to potentially low tens of thousands worth of people shrieking as they realize that the apocalypse has come. It is the literal end of days. There's no amount you could kill that would make a sizable dent without using up all of your ammunition. Uh, if it is a slog to get through, I will just blast through into this building instead and just go through it. Uh, so if it which, is which building? Down, uh, this building here. So so you're still trying to cross that street, Ollie. Oh, just the street. Oh my yeah. god, okay. Yeah, okay. Like, you're in an industrial zone. Everyone in the giant industrial zone has just twigged that the yeah. giant island they're floating on is collapsing and that they're all going to die. 
and the streets have immediately flooded. The slog isn't that everyone's attacking you here because you're not dealing with soldiers. The slog is the panicked crowd that you're trying to force your way through. And on that note, let's see, because I think this is probably a good time for a roll. We Brothers! Brother Mackey, remember, the rest of the squad still has their grenades. We can use them to clear the way. Uh, it again, may only it may only make a small dent, but it might help. Uh, again, but, no. I turn no, to because we're not trying to kill; we're trying to make space. Uh, I is, turn to brother, brother Koya. If you put your hand on my shoulder, we can use our combined weight to push a passage through them. And uh, I guess I'd like to roll strength for that. Yeah, I've been looking at skills to see which skill it would be. May I roll shove? Roll what? Sorry, shove. <laughs> It's not an actual oh, skill. Shove. I, can't. I thought you were saying shop, and I was thinking, is there a shop skill? <laughs> it's like commerce, but, you know, more when you're out with your mates than the mall with your, you know, space marine armor. What the fuck are you talking about? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know either. Very rarely do I know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I, I think that's... Uh, strength, then? Yeah, let's call it... Uh, Probably Intimidate over Strength, right? I'll take Intimidate over Strength at a minus 20, please. Cool. And am I getting support from Benji? Yeah, you can get support from me. Cool. And Isn't he looking after Thumbs and making sure he doesn't get lost? Yeah, but I can stick the Thumbs on my back or have his hand mm. where... I mean, I'm, you, I'm, you, I'm, you can support one person. We're doing the Space Marine conga line. <laughs> That's kind of how I'm seeing it. Just link arms and daisy chain it. Exactly, yeah. I mean, those bizarre sights as your city's falling. Seeing, you know, 12 foot tall metal goliaths just, you know, conga lining daisy chain. Can we skip while we're at it? Like, everyone knows that that's like the most efficient. <laughs> <laughs> um, do I get my strength bonuses for this? You get your strength bonuses. Like I say, it's pick one cool. of the support. So strength, but no Benji. Okay, I just made the strength roll. That's fine. No worries, Benji. Um, cool. Intimidate. I've already got that train at plus 10. And then I've got strength at plus 20. So that's a net total of plus 10. Is there anything else? I feel like I'm forgetting something. No. So it's a net total oh, of plus 30. It's a mi- uh, minus 20. So I've got plus 10 uh, from being trained and another plus 20 okay. from... One human's not much to push aside. 12 are much to push aside. A thousand are. Yeah, so I'm only a net plus 10, so 60 or under. I'm going to... <laughs> That's a lot of doth. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fake that. Get 100. No. <laughs> <laughs> you slag. <laughs> uh, two degrees of success. How is it that young Nicholas is the only person with this cam in a decent position? Like... <laughs> You, because on my screen, Ollie and Benji are right next to each other, and you were both in opposite corners of the thing, which meant I was getting this like terrifying half Ollie, half Benji face, and it was really freaking me out. I wasn't going to comment, but the more I looked at it, the worse it got. Uh, <laughs> sorry, what was your doff on that, Ollie? Uh, degrees of success was two. Sorry, doss rather, yes. So, Mackie. Having linked arms as best he can, with his melter gun out and his other arm mostly holding up his heavy weapon. Uh, yeah, linked arms with Koya, who has himself linked arms with Nazim, who has himself linked arms with Kuzco. Linked arms with Thumbs. Oh, sorry, yes. Koya has linked arms with Thumbs, who's linked arms with Nazim, who's linked arms with Kuzco. Hmm. The, uh, the five of you begin to wade out into the crowd, pushing, shoving. Screams and shouts echo all around you. Occasional, pitiful shots plink off your armour. Nothing that comes even slightly close to penetrating even Thumbs' wreck of a suit. And you force your way across the road, through the menials, snapping lim- uh, limbs, cracking through groups just strong-arming your way onto the other side of the conveyor way and out into a, a narrower section of back passage. Here the press is thicker and faster, but two dots, right, Ollie? Yep. I've lost your webcam, Ollie. Oh, it's funny. I, my webcam keeps sliding between Benji and Nick, so I think this, I think Roll20 might be having a bit of trouble with webcams tonight. Yeah. Yeah, you, uh, you force your way into a narrower street and then somewhat down it, in fact. 
You've made it a fair ways, maiming and occasionally potentially killing quite a number of menials, but people are either terrified, attempting to get away from you, but kind of stuck in the press, uh, or only very limitedly uh, giving you any kind of resistance, when your helmet voxes go off almost simultaneously. The words are a garbled mess. You can't make out so much as a sim- uh, so much as a uh, syllable, but... You do recognize the Legion call sign. Let me just double check. Make sure I'm not fucking this up. Yes, it is a Legion 4 squad ID. And it is registering as in some distress. That's it? Just in some distress? Uh, Actually, quite a bit of distress, but a lot of it is in Legion rooms, which means it's somewhat encoded to you. Uh, I could take potentially a test to get additional information on the subject. Um, yes, what please. Do you want? Do you have, I mean, this would be Nazim we should be looking at, right? Well, our leadership characters, so Nazim or Koya, probably. Uh, I would say logic or a relevant law for code breaking, potentially. I would also we have Scholastic uh, Primer Imperialis. I would also take um, what's his thing? Uh, tech use. Uh, war? War fit? We only, I only have common war, this but is... I do have... I have Scholastic Law. I have you scholastic have, you have scholastic war. war. I will take right. Scholastic War. At a, uh, we'll call it a plus zero. Um, I Can I make a Scholastic prim- Primer Imperialis, or sorry, Principia Bellicosa, as it should be? Yeah, <laughs> I mean to be fair, we did not figure that out until like four days ago. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, if I'm going to fail on something, I'd rather it be that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and your, uh, right. your sergeant is focused on keeping the squad together and not dying. Uh, I'll, I'll let you take the same role, Benji, because it's um, secondary, you're at a minus 10. Or secondary, sorry, because it's functionally a re-roll, a re-roll you're at minus 10. Okay. Uh, does anyone else have Scholastic Principia Bellicosa that could assist me? Uh, I do. Uh, ah, I think can I get an busy, assist? I, I think you're busy shouldering, aren't you? I Carl, do you have that. Principia Bellicosa? I believe you do. Mm. I a... It's uh, Primary Imperialis. You can you can change it to uh, Prince. I say Principia, like Principia isn't like it should be a hard C, right? Um, yeah, I mean I got Primary. I don't know about. It's the same. Terms. It's the same thing. We we called it Primary Imperialis, and it's just an anachronistic name. Okay, well, I'll change it to that dude then. Principia, blah blah. Uh, okay, if I get an assist from Carl, that will be at forty-five or under. That's a pass Oh, of Ooh. one degree. Squeak it, you cheeky bastard. <laughs> well, I mean, I presume you'd... <laughs> just in gameplay terms, I presume you wouldn't send out a distress signal that could literally only be understood by, like, <sighs> one-third of the Imperial for No, not even one-third of the Imperial forces, because we've got army backup. Yeah, one-third of the Astartes forces. Yeah. Uh, so Help, help, we're in distress. I can't understand a fucking word you're saying, mate. As you're, uh, as you're proceeding, Mackie out front is still sort of elbowing his way through the crowd, like focusing on forcing and forging a path towards the spaceport. Uh, behind him, we have Koya, who actually is kind of homing in on the uh, distress signal we're getting. The sergeant seems more determined to keep the squad moving forwards. They're, they're like, yeah, you're getting a distress signal, but that could be any number of people and things, and you're all going to be in distress when you die in the galaxy's largest car crash minutes from now. Do we know how close they are? Is it just a, a general... We haven't received the message yet. Well, uh, the message is garbled. There, some The signal is coming from somewhere within 200 metres off to the southeast. Uh, so it's down a, a different, a different little road. <clears throat> it is. What do you get? One, one dos, right? Cool. Yeah. So it is a Legion Four distress signal. It seems to be from the runes you can make out and the the bits that aren't horrendously garbled. A fairly extreme distress signal. One that is specifically requesting assistance from Legion Four, uh, but one which also indicates uh, several Marines are dead. Marines are dead. I mean, marines do die. To be fair, it's not. Super are they in stasis or are they dead? 
Uh, it's unclear from the garbled response. Uh, to be I... fair, I think it's slightly it's slightly academic because we don't have the ability to extract them to check if their Susan membranes have kicked in in the how long before this thing hits terminal uh, height. Know, yeah, you know that you're falling. You don't know how far, and also yeah, it would vary know. depending on the craft you get. The way I see it, we still can go. The quickest way to get to the phasma is still roughly where they are anyway. Yeah, I say if, if, if they're um, dead marines. We should try swinging by at least. Yes. Well, my I was going to say, can I to provide an in character thing for this? Can I roll common law adeptus astartes because I have that as a law? What are you after with your roll? Well, my my roll was mostly going to be to say to the say to the rest of my squad, Legion Four is well known for its reliance on vehicles and uh, heavy mechanization. Brothers, one of them may know how to fly a fly a plane, which we don't. <laughs> Uh, we should aid. Uh, it was going to be everyone suddenly wanted to aid them, so it seemed kind of pointless my asking for the role that had to justify yeah. going to save them. <laughs> I was expecting say. everyone to go, fuck them, leave them. No, no, full of Marines. We, we fucking go. So, um, I guess I, I, I swivel on the spot a little bit. And I <laughs> Begin <can't> it. <laughs> right, Begin in which case, I would like to try. Side. I would exactly. like to try boxing them, boxing them back, asking for precise coordinates, uh, status of squad members, uh, oh. if we will uh, encounter any resistance. I'll take we are coming to render aid. Tech use at a minus ten, please. Ah, uh, crud! I don't have tech use. Uh, is this tech use to vox people? Like, because I've just been doing that on fiat the whole time. Yeah. Th- so this this is less the vox and more the vox getting through, basically. A lot of the previous, like the previous times when you've been boxing, you've been boxing people on relatively clearish channels. Uh, okay, right well, now, fifteen or fifteen or under. Yeah. Whether or not, if this gets through, it gets through. Nope, nope, that really doesn't get through. <laughs> you no, to jump yeah. off the edge. You're gonna like, die. The entire, well, this- the entire imperial evacuation network, uh, evacuation is rather, is going on on mostly your vox network. Uh, like Legion Two is rampantly trying to override Legion Four and Six, most of whom have realised that something is wrong, but some of whom have dug in and are absolutely refusing to retreat in the face of the enemy, especially Legion Six. <laughs> Sucks to be them. He does. Yeah, they're basically saying it's fine, it's fine, everything's fine. As Legion Two is screaming at them to get the fuck back to the landers and stop pushing forwards for fuck's sakes. <laughs> get to the Stormbird, something's gone badly wrong. Okay, well, they're not going to know we're coming, but fuck it. It's fine. I don't, so we're mainly going for the fucking Marines, uh, but... Uh... <laughs> if there happens to be someone who can drive an aeronautical craft there, I mean... <laughs> that was going to be probably one of the Marines, was my argument, was one of them may know how to drive. As you push through the winding, narrow series of not quite side streets, they're sort of side main streets, if that makes sense. You eventually come out on a, I suppose for the area, large-ish, almost open plaza, blasted with mostly soot, and at this stage increasingly thick caustic gas swirling and obscuring the ground beneath you. All of you note that you've now been falling so far and so fast that you're having to engage your mag boots somewhat lightly just to keep on the ground. Oh no... It's never a good time when you have to engage mag boots. There's never a good time to engage mag boots. If, if yeah, it's just it's never a good thing. Yeah, we never. Have. With the aid yeah. of your helmet's uh, internal auspexes, you're able to pick out a crashed stormbird on the other side of the plaza. It seems to have lodged itself deep, deep, deep inside a manufactoria. It's utterly uh, unflyworthy. Okay. Like I was about the- to say, how. No, the the wings have snapped off. One of the wings is close to you, and you're like... How crashed? (laughs) Thoroughly crashed. Right. Uh, Outside and around it prowl perhaps a dozen, two dozen litho tigers. And from inside, you can see staccato rhythms of bolter fire being juddered out. What do? Thank God we've still got grenades. (laughs) Oh, when I when I glued my three, uh, was it crack grenades or, or it frag was grenades? Crack, as I recall. Yeah. Did I get one from each squad member who was close to me, or did I use up all three of mine? You, you used up all three of yours. Yours. There yeah. was some suggestion about getting one from every squad member, but you didn't in the end. And it was my crack, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it was your crack. Nice. Good one. Let's put that zero. Yeah, squad. What do? 
Um, well, I'm down to throw a couple of grenades. Throw grenades, then charge the tigers. I think and there's a couple of dozen litho tigers here, so you yep. might need to think smarter rather than harder in terms of charging into melee combat. If you do engage them, you're going to be here for a little bit. How many did you say? A couple of dozen. A couple of dozen? They've not seen you, though. Is there brothers, a brothers who, among, who amongst us is the swiftest? I, 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 we should gonna... lure them into a choke point. I, I, I was are, they, suggest- are, they? Sorry, are the Litha Titans on the near tigers. the edge or on the Litha Titans? Sorry, Litha Tigers. Are they on the edge or close to um, maybe so, twenty meters away? Is there? Can, can I roll my demolitions and see if there's um, yeah, some way a couple of well placed grenades could collapse the set flooring section they're on potentially? If your yeah, sergeant, they're flying into the air. If your sergeant is willing to give you maybe a minute, perhaps slightly less, and for a difficult roll, I would say you could do it. You'd have to like duck down into the subsurface levels of the, the hive, right? So you're on the top at the moment, yeah. basically. You'd have to go into one of the levels beneath that, but it's probably not doing great. Uh, and then do a speedy evaluation of the area they're on, but you could conceivably do something. Two I give him two minutes. Can we- can we see the controller of the Litho Tigers? Because we know that the War Witches control them through some kind of strange technology. Yeah, you, you can't see that. Can't okay, see. which point I would suggest my first plan. Brothers, which of us is the swiftest? What is your plan? Thumbs One of us draws them thumb. away. <clears throat> yeah, Thumbs raises a hand. I am swiftest. I, uh... We'll see what... Yeah. On. I was gonna say I, I turn to, 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 to the brother sergeant and I'm like, so if you give me two brother, if you give me two minutes, I will duck down beneath and see if I can find a weak point in the structure. Brother, and we do not have two minutes. <laughs> we can make two minutes. Tension, we- tension, tension, tension. I nod brother my head. Sergeant, I disagree. We do not have two minutes. You uh, are you gonna let him call you like that? H- how long have we have we been running on running for, Ewan? Uh difficult to tell, not that long, like five, ten minutes at this point. You've five you've minutes. got, at the maximum, I would say, fifteen before you hit the ground. We've got time. Two minutes. We- I, I nod and I quickly duck down below. Uh, also, uh, while he's... Because he's, he's taking two minutes, uh, can I get a heal from the uh, medic? And the real motive. <laughs> <in those. laughs> it, it was a bonus. It was a bonus. Yeah, of course. Alright, yeah. Uh... <laughs> Fucking Medicaid at a... It's still speedy, so we'll call it a minus 10. But you can do a Medicaid check on him, Carl. So, you and I mentioned... Oh, no, 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 no! I forgot the extra zero! Oh. No! Oh. You get a one. Oh, it's just a big thumb. A big thumb, a big thorn in his thumb. <sighs> call that out, he's fine. Oh, fuck, if it wasn't for that minus 10, by one degree of failure. Oh. Yeah, no. Not- Ooh, sorry, Ollie. I was wondering, do you not get bonuses for the... Do you, is there not the Medicaid um, skill? Not skill, sorry. Medicaid talent that gives you uh, like bonuses or anything like that? Do you, do you not start with that? No. Nope. Ah, oh, okay. Sorry. Here we go. Oh. Um, so, so I... S- sorry, because Carl's thing. Um, yeah, you're, you're doing your best to give what medical aid you can to Nazim, but he's in a bit of a bad state. He's no thumbs, but... He needs. He he's like just on the cusp of needing serious surgery. Honestly, and you're able to make fairly little progress. Mackie, what were you going to say? Uh, so I did not realize demolitions is also an, is an advanced skill. I just bought it as a scholastic law, like way back when. I think last session I realized it's actually an advanced skill. Are you all right for me to still roll scholastic law <laughs> demolitions? Yeah, we'll say it's fine for this campaign, and like we'll just refund you the costs at the end, maybe. And then yeah, that's as usual. That sounds fine. Uh, cool. Okay. In which case, um, roll d hundred. Do I get a, a little bonus because I uh, I got extra time over a minute? Uh, no, you do not have extra time. This is incredibly narrow time. Like I would actually say it's probably a minus ten for the time. Yep. Yeah, okay. So I'm gonna roll. How many crack part. grenades do you have? Uh, I have no crack grenades, but I have uh, frag grenades. You would need up. to gather crack grenades from the rest of the squad as well. You can have mine. You can have yeah. three. Yeah, that's, you can have my three. Cool, okay, uh, that's six total then. You can have my one. Cool, seven total. Uh, right, um, I do not have fate, so if 
this goes wrong, it goes wrong. Um, wait, didn't you, wait, like, what? Wait, didn't you regenerate one at the start? Or? I did, I've already spent it. Oh. Oh. That's impressive. Could I roll my demolitions off my perception? Was it usually rough? Uh, intelligence or fellowship? Oh, that's fair. But yeah, no, I would say perception is fair in this circumstance. I'm curious how demolition works off fellowships, unless you're destroying relationships. <laughs> Never. <laughs> I'm always destroying relationships. Oh, Jesus maybe, it's, maybe it's to enchant the children whilst okay, you make a I'm, fireworks display. I'm confused why you're rolling as quattle marks, but that is a six, is it not? Uh, that is indeed. What's your DOS? Uh, so I was rolling at a 30 or under, so just two degrees. 16 to 26, yeah, two degrees. Two degrees of success. Mm-hmm. Mackie punches his way through a nearby drain, or stomps his way through a nearby drain, and uh, well, even a drain, I suppose an access hatch, actually, and descending into the cramped uh, topmost layer of tunnels, begins to barge his way through the immediately apparent sea of panicking menials. He's doing this. Can I be looking around to try and see if I see any trace of the thing controlling those litho tigers? Sure. Do you have senescence? No, you know I don't. I don't know you don't. Maybe you do. I suppose you're not playing a librarian, so it seems unlikely. I'll give you that. <laughs> uh, yeah, Nick. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, I zoned out for a second then. No, it's alright. It was casual uh, sass. Just ban. Uh, just bounce, just bounce. Carl being Bansaurus Rex. Archbishop of Banterbury. I'll, uh, I'll take awareness perception at a minus 40, please, Benji. I suppose this is scru- scrutiny, right? Scrutiny perception. In which case it's probably more specific, so minus 30. Okay. Uh, right. I will spend one of my fate on that. I've got three. No, okay. Yeah, no, you have a look around, but you can't see anything. They could be hidden anywhere. Hell, they might be underground. <clears throat> it's one of the worries I'm having right now. I'm going to bump into them. Well, good. Kill them if you do. All their litho tigers are up top. Mackie, you make your way through the cramped under tunnels, I suppose almost over tunnels, uh, and locating as many structural weaknesses as you can. Actually, having seven cracks affords you a fair amount of luxury in, in, you know, picking targets, not really just having to pick and choose. Sorry, just flashbacks to the uh, fucking apartment suite colossal building thing. Here's three crack grenades. Now demolish me this entire structure. No, this time this time you only have a fairly small section of street to collapse and you've got seven crack grenades to do it with. Slap. This cool. bad boy, so many cracks in it. <laughs> exactly. Qualified demolitionist and you slap them down, pull the pin, and you're off. There's no finesse to this. You're simply doing it as rough and ready as you can. And you honestly have no idea if it succeeds, even as you hear things begin to crash and collapse behind you. However... The squad up top do see, as you're looking at this warehouse building still under siege, staccato bolter fire still coming out from it, you do see the ground begin to tip, churn, rip, tear, and collapse. Metallic sinkholes opening up as key elements of the structure are rendered asunder. Rendered asunder? Rent asunder. The majority of the tigers fall in, all of them apart from perhaps the largest. Whereupon a single marine comes charging out of the building and chainsword flying, flying bottle, a uh, bottle, flying body tackles the litho golem into the ground. Well, that's how you get it done. Rally to our brother. That's, yeah. Rally. And a good thing too. By the time the rest of you reach the battle brother, <laughs> the litho tiger is on top of them. Their chainsword well, has been snapped in two. You know this new. We've got this new thing called guns. Uh, sure, if you want to risk hitting the guy. Yeah, as I was say. Have a good shot. Might as well just get over there and rip off the. Nick, <laughs> put your arms in its mouth again. No, I think I, I think will. Is, I think this is entirely fair. So, in keeping with the characteristics that we've built up here, Koya proceeds to line up a fairly sensible shot. Whereupon, 
uh, Nazim and Thumbs charge out in front of him. It's a high and low rugby tackle, just v-dump! <laughs> immediately obscuring the entire thing. What's Cusco up to? I'm getting my broom broom stick and I'm gonna womp him with the zamzams. Exactly. Okay, so Cusco's also in it. So Koi is left there, but guys, we have we have guns. <laughs> okay. So whilst they're doing this with the litho litho golems, I will quickly and I say quickly, because obviously Mackie's is yet to return to us, run into the Stormbird and assess on whether or not there's anything we can scavenge in there that could be useful. Grenades, yeah. extra special heavy weapons like melter guns or anything like that that was deployed. Power pass them. That's that's fair. I will take search over perception at a. I think it's probably a plus zero. Okay, that is going to be. <laughs> no, that is a uh, one. One. Two. Uh, do I spend the? Do I spend one more fate? I've got <laughs> two. Yeah, I'll spend one more. Screw it. No, it's fail. Right. Imperial truth says no. What's your doff there? Uh, yeah, two. Two. Okay. You, seeing that your shots are hopelessly confused at this point, simply sprint past your brothers in full scout mode and head straight into the uh, warehouse wherein lies the crashed Stormbird. It doesn't take you very long at all to get inside the Stormbird and see that the thing has been more or less stripped clean. You know that there are no other marines in here. Well, there are no other living marines in here. There's quite a number of dead marines in varying states of disarray. There's numerous dead Imperial Army troopers. Uh, and there is a shit ton of spent munitions. But nothing uh, that you so could... Yeah. Oh, sorry. I was going to say, so that's the one surviving marine then that we've just seen and he nearly committed to Sabuku. Well, he's not quite dead. <laughs> As mentioned, the Litho Golem is on top of him. His chainsaw's rent in two, and its jaws are currently just about to snap around his neck when the rest of the squad arrives. And chainsaws start laying into it from the side. Screaming and rage-filled, the lithogolem spasms, lashing out at the three of you, but with three marines surprising at uh, surprise attacking and flanking it, uh, you are able to dispatch it relatively cleanly. You know, I feel like I speak for the entire squad and I say I would be relatively annoyed if the guy who messaged us for help tried to commit suicide by Magic Tiger as soon as we saved him. (laughs) (laughs) It seems a bit reductive, damn it. There is that slight fear. Until a speedy check from those of you who are outside, register that his vitals are indeed still up. The injured Marine staggers to his feet and snaps off a fairly sloppy salute. The stump where his hand had been <laughs> seconds ago clumping wetly against his helmet. Uh, uh, are there any other marines around? Like, uh, be it uh, dead or not? There's quite a few dead inside. Oh, sorry, was that in character or out, out of character? Uh, I was sorry. asking out of that. Oh, right. Uh, no, other cha- uh, no other marines around out of character. Brother Sergeant, casualties inside are total. You uh, get a little notification pop up. Nazim is squad sergeant. Uh, it is another marine asking to join your private vox network. Do, do, do. do yes. Do. <laughs> Accepted. Truly, it is a dark age. Look at how this not buzzing as well. Um, like, while this is going on, I would like to make the suggestion of destroying the gene seeds, seeing that we don't have the time to properly uh, take care of them. Yeah. I suspect um, the mission giving... they may do that for us. I, I, yes, I do not think we have any time. <laughs> that is actually true, yeah. Uh, grab one, I'll, I'll grab one corpse. Uh, the corpses and are all in Brother Sergeant, I'll... this is not the time. Yeah. These will be destroyed in the crash. We need to leave. Yeah, but how do we know that? <laughs> how far? It's, is it literally like a five second lead over, grab one, and then we can go? No, oh, no, I was thinking of just lobbing like, some frags in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, no, they're, they're right. The bodies will get destroyed. It's fine. I think if we can just save one body, good. And I can just grab the body and run. B- Brother Sergeant, no, and why are you bul- carrying a, bother- a body? Mar- a Marine is bulky to hold as well. Like, I'm, I'm not letting okay, you okay. hold. So, like, that is going to be a weight malice, genuinely. Okay. okay uh, yeah, so the, on, the living Marine, however, having joined your uh, squad box network temporarily as a guest. <clears throat> Brother Mondrico. Cas- uh, Legion 4 casualties more or less total Sergeant is it, am I Sergeant? 
Captain? Yes, you're Brother Sergeant. Sergeant Nazim, yes. <laughs> I am. Brother Sergeant Nazim. Uh, are we sixth? No, what are we? We are the Second Legion. Second Legion, thank you. <laughs> this is Nick forgetting all this. Uh, Second Legion. God, you've been uh, shitty about us th- this us not calling you Sergeant the entire campaign. Uh, <laughs> Ewan, guy Ewan has been shitty. Squad. Ewan has been shitty about it. I have not. Ewan hasn't said uh, shit. <laughs> um, we're on our way to the spaceport. We must evacuate. Uh, yes, I have a slight theory. Correct me if I'm wrong. Are we falling? Uh, yes. I'm on a tremendous amount of painkillers right now, so my senses are slightly dulled. Uh, we are falling at an increasing rate. We need to make to the spaceport and commandeer a vessel. Then... Can you fly a Can you fly a vessel? <laughs> can you fly a vessel? He yes. looks down at his missing stump hand as as uh, Koya emerges from the building and presumably. Let's just do a speedy check and, and get Ollie reunited with everyone. Uh, Ollie, what are you? What are your plans after you did the big collapse underground? Bearing in mind you don't see it successful, you just hear the grenades mm-hmm. going off. So I guess I, I would. I'm going to vox up after I hear the last crack go off and like guys. Was it success, successful? And I presume what I hear is just the sound of Nick's arm getting eaten by a litter tiger. <laughs> no, it was, the, it was uh, the new marine getting eaten, uh, his hand getting eaten by a litter tiger. Uh, litho- yes. um, so I, I'm, I'm, um, I, I, I vox up, but I guess everyone's too busy in battle. So I, I'm just going to presume it, it either worked. I either killed the marine, I killed the litho- t- litho- golem, or I killed my squad. You know, it, it's... it's I got to demolition stuff. That's really, really what matters. Though. Okay. <laughs> so, job done. You uh, climb out of the nearest access hatch and sort of saunter up to find them discussing things with the other marine. So you now can, may consider yourself reunited along with Koya. Uh, <clears throat> Brother Mackie. Mm-hmm. Let us make a path towards Phasma Spaceport post-haste. Uh I agree. Marine in reply to Koya's query there. Uh, as as he looks down at his stump arm. Not very well, but I can try. Have you received training in how to fly uh, fly aeronautical vehicles? I have. Uh, more than us, then. You're flying. <laughs> uh, I guess I am <laughs> going to stop. Uh, I <laughs> lenses uh, cycle off, then on again. <laughs> Let's move. Come on. I'm going to start pushing forward again, I suppose. Okay. There is not a thick press of humans here. Instead, you're skirting around. <laughs> you're at this point at the edge, I believe, of the floating hive, and you're skirting around said edge. It's it's not like a narrow ledge. It's actually, if anything, quite a wide street. <clears throat> but it is still there. And a speedy look over the bottom confirms an incredibly terrifying thing. That even through the soupy, gaseous, thick Venusian atmosphere, you are no longer so high up that the ground is invisible. Oh, things are going to start getting real hot real soon. Yeah, this oh, is they're already intense. hot. Like, your, your squat, uh, squat, your squad, uh, temperature gauges are, are going wild. People outside this would be baking. Uh, already, if their skin wasn't melting up, uh, melting off from the caustic atmosphere, which may account for why you're seeing so few, pe- uh, so many f- less people <laughs> outside now. In fact, mm. which means you have actually somewhat unexpectedly come up on a side wall of the Phasma spaceport. It is no less heavily, def- well, actually, it's definitely less heavily defended than the extremely heavily defended entrance, but it's still rather heavily manned. Pillboxes uh, riddle its colossal rockrete exterior, extending up perhaps five, six stories. You can see little guns roving and pointing every which way from inside, looking for targets even now. There may well once have been people manning atop the walls also, for they do seem to be crenellated, but there's certainly no one up there now. Nothing within has seen you, or if it has, it hasn't started shooting yet. You can... Uh, uh, what do... I message to Brother Sergeants on the Vox Network, I suggest we go down into the under tunnels or the over tunnels. They seem somewhat extensive, and presumably there's less points for us to be fired upon down there. They may be blocked off, but it's worth checking out. Uh, how many more uh, crack grenades do we have in the squad? Have we used all of them now? I think we've used all you of them now. We have used all of them. We can use frag grenades to like blow out any underground pillboxes we find. 
That's frag grenades don't really do that. Frag grenades are strictly anti-personnel rather yeah. than anti-material. They're not really yeah, strong enough. I, 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 we can, you can use that to kill who's in the pillbox, then we can just run through uh, the pillbox. Uh, if you can get into the pillbox. Uh, and also, like, it is it is a hive they plan for you to do tunnel and city fighting. Okay. It is by no means less defended down there. Oh, okay, okay. Fair enough. Okay. Um... um but it, I'm sure it's like a, it's an open street over to the wall, is it? Or, it is or the is spaceport it? sealed or not? The spaceport is not sealed. It is an open street over to the wall, but it's not that na- uh, not that wider street. It's if anything quite narrow. It's maybe like 20, no, 25 meters. Or I mean, like these pillboxes are probably automated in that case, so there's probably not going to be people Sorry. inside. Because if there are uh, people inside them, pillboxes was perhaps the wrong the wrong uh, description to use. If you imagine uh, arrow slits in a wall, those with little las guns coming out. Uh, well, las guns in some instances more than a few, in fact, las cannons. So it's a heavily manned wall with at least some guns still working. Um, we have. Mm, I wonder if if we could throw grenades through some of the slits, not to destroy the weapons, but to destroy the people behind them. Uh, there's not going to be people behind them. Like you reckon, it's automated. Uh, yeah, because basically every normal human at this point is dead. Oh, that's a good point. Unless they're in a seal, unless they're in a sealed environment. Um, um, quick question: not... hmm? like, Have we actually seen them fire or just moving? They haven't spotted you yet, so at least no, no. But I mean, like, right. have we seen them fire? Like, are there other ships, and have they fired out? Like, or are uh, they just scanning by the looks of it? They just seem to be scanning. You haven't seen them shoot at anything or anyone. Okay, then. Well, I mean, if there are other ships that are kind of like bailing, then. Like, oh, they're, sorry, they're, 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 they're facing yeah. out of yeah. the walls. You not are, shooting. You are not see. Uh, you have not seen uh, Voidcraft launching, <laughs> but you did only get here a few seconds ago, and every second counts at this point. <laughs> You're within visual range of the surface, so yeah. Uh, I'm just thinking. Um, I mean, so twenty meters over the wall, we could try dashing it. Um, we could maybe use some destroyed um, auto carriages as. Shields from the lab. There are no <laughs> I, I, I like your idea. Also, huh? there, no there is no way a civilian right. auto carriage is going to stand up to uh, a Lazca. Yeah. Mm. Let alone multiple. Um, actually, this building here, is that like a very tiny gap? Like, does it essentially like look yeah, into the wall? It's generally quite tiny. Like I said, I think it's 20, 30 meters. Okay, so could we maybe just go up a few levels, yeah, patch a hole through, then just maybe jump onto the top of the wall, potentially, or like, like I can maybe melt a hole through the wall. Uh, melt uh, gun is an anti-bunker weapon. You can; it, it's not bad against rockery. So I'm thinking maybe then we go into this building here. We go and which it looks like there's probably going to be much less firepower descending upon us, and try and just. Borrow our way through uh, an area. I mean, uh, that that building does it. Is it taller than the uh, spaceport or smaller? Uh, top side, it is definitely not taller than the spaceport. Okay. Um, is it any closer to the wall than to the spaceport than we are right now in the street? You could say perhaps ten meters if you punched quite a ways into it, but that's also quite a bit of time. Um, we might have to risk going for the wall. Because I'm assuming the, the, these uh, arrow sets, it doesn't look like they can aim directly down. Uh, right? No, they're not that uh, articulated. No, so once we make it to the wall, we're good. Um, That's a good point, w- yeah. Wondrico, uh from behind, you're not expecting me to climb it, are you? No. We have something to get through, I think. <laughs> Looking at Mackie. <Mackey. laughs> excellent, excellent. I am um, following... But okay. it's difficult to focus. Uh, space out by two meters and just leg it to the wall, I guess. If we're not bunched up, it's harder to shoot at us as a group. I feel, remember those last cannons do like 60, 10 damage. It's, it's, it will hurt if we get hit. Don't get hit. <laughs> yeah, I, I, it, it, time is against us. We have to get over there. Okay. You're the most important. Two, I maybe have two people run in front of you. <laughs> you shall be my car. You know what? Yeah, we'll have the newbie because he's a newbie, uh, and we'll have whoever else has the most health right now. Sorry, by newbie, do you mean the guy we just rescued? 
Oh, actually, no, we need him to fly, so... I was about to say, yeah. Well. <laughs> so... Do you mean the only one of us who can <laughs> fucking drive? Who, who has the most armour out of us right now? Yeah. We all have the same. Uh, Koya the same. and Kuzco have the most health. Um, Other than that. Koya and Kuzco flank me, and I thumbs, run up. Thumbs yeah. stretches an arm up immediately. No. I volunteer. I can no. take the last shots. You're in the back with us. <laughs> That's a great impression. Just back Hello. Yeah. Oh, and oh. Uh, with, hey! with that, with that note of sadness, yeah, thumbs, Oh, God, no. Thumbs pops out of existence with a slurp. And, uh, like, best but terrible timing, mate. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> and Coatlebox pops back in. <laughs> Hello, brothers. Like, What's happening? About <laughs> seconds, like, so, you've you've made I, it a bit further, Creed. You've picked up uh, a Legion Four Marine named Mondraco on the way. Do I a... know that name? Why would you possibly know that name? When have you I ever know, met Legion? I Four know before? that name. <laughs> Is it a name we should kill? I don't think. No, I... no, that would be metagaming. But I know that name. <laughs> That's a yes. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, Nicholas, you should remember, but I don't think you should, actually. Uh, Wait, what's his there. name? Mondrico. 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 Hint, hint, Creed. He's Do you remember warrior. some shenanigans in Rogue Oh! Where, yeah, at one point, you robbed the past. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was great. Do, yeah, do you remember speaking to a specific oh. Iron Warrior? <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, yeah, I do remember this. I was there for that. It's one of the few um, Rogue Trader sessions. Was it Rogue Trader? It was Rogue Trader. Yeah. Yeah, it was not the few that I was there for, yeah. Ollie, Ollie would know him as his quest giver from Black Crusade. Yeah. Oh, shit! <laughs> he's, uh, he's Ewan's pet Chaos NPC. No, I, I, I like Chaos generally, but I just... So if, if we kill him, enough. does it throw off the entire timeline? No, the warp will go spoopy whoopy, I'm a go floopy, and things will happen. Spoopy whoopy, I'm a go floopy. Is that an official stance? <laughs> that, is a, that is a technical term for what the warp does. That's a direct <laughs> quote from Zeke. <laughs> <laughs> Someone make a fucking note. Uh, no, he's got fake points, so he'll, he'll burn a fake point if you kill him. Okay. So also, him we fly. need him to fly. Yeah, also, you need him to fly. Okay, fine. <laughs> Stop suggesting yeah. we kill yeah, the one you... person who can fucking drive. <laughs> oh dear. Cool. Okay, so uh, ranking, I suppose. So, just, should we just charge them? Uh, yeah, so I said like, we're having Kawatamox and Cusco. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you and um, Mole, whatever. Mm-hmm. Mordor, more, more wherever his face is, can, he can be directly behind me. Mordor. Yeah, yeah, he's more yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. And then myself and uh, Kalata Marks will follow up the rear. Cool, okay. But we have um, to just leg it at the fucking... Uh, at the like following up the rear, don't you? You bet I do. Um, um, before we break for it, throw a grenade as far as we can, one to our left, one to our right, to draw attention away. I somewhat suspect the six two meter tall charging leviathans may be more. What I'm what I'm what I'm thinking is that if their turrets turn away and we can start running, it's still an extra I don't know second or so to turn back. Yeah, you're, uh, only, can... you're only trying to cover twenty meters. He's not necessarily wrong here. It, it, yeah, like, uh, okay, so I think this sounds like a coordination role, right? So Nazim, yes. I will take. Make him roll a command roll. Yeah, this should be command, right? I'll take. I'll take. Off of logic. Off of, off of int. <laughs> yeah, you can do command over int. This is a fairly nice. simple plan as well, so I'll give you a plus twenty. Nice. Come on, while he's rolling that, I was success. Oh my god. <laughs> success. It's a success. Yes. Uh, it's Carl, there. it's okay. My int is fifty-five it. plus twenty makes that a seventy-five roll. Your, your huh? part of the plan there, Carl, was actually what you wanted to do anyway, so Cusco's job is to leg it. I was just going to point out that it took that long to get back to doing what I said I was going to do anyway. It's just kind of like fucking facepalm. Oh, they did. There are there were good reasons, I think. Can you, you know... Sorry, what was your DOS there, young Nicholas? One. Okay. One DOS. Two grenades are lobbed. Uh, whose frags are those, by the way? One can I have one. a frag. I'll check a frag. Oh, okay, in which case, none of them are mine then. I'll, t- I'll keep my frags. <laughs> one, one from Azim and one from Koya. 
uh, two frags are lobbed. Almost immediately, every live gun in the wall tracks to one of two positions, either grenade detonation. And a second after that, the squad begins charging straight at the wall of the spaceport. Can I serpentine? I don't think it's going to help. Uh, you can serpentine. I will. Re- it's not what your sergeant ordered, but also, like, you know, your sergeant took quite a while to arrive at the thing you were just going to do anyway, so who gives a shit about listening to the sergeant, right? Uh, <laughs> I will take. Who's leading the charge here? It was Ollie, right? I'm yeah. actually, I am, yeah. Uh, and I'm helping. Well, I'm, I'm on the one flanker, side. Actually. Yeah. It's Sorry? the flanker. It's the flankers, so it'd be either... Okay, in that case, Carl. I will take... Well, no, because Cusco is serpentining. So I will take from... <laughs> we needed you on the flank! <laughs> well, I mean, you know... Well, that's, that's like, yeah, it's, it's just running in like an S pattern. He's still, he's still flanking. He's just going flank. Yeah, yeah, but your, your job your job was to take hits that were going at, uh, towards Mackie. So by avoiding taking hits, do you see how it's... It worked out perfectly. Oh, yeah, no, it does from your point of view. Just, you know, less so from what your sergeant ordered you. But, uh, you know, that's fine. That's fine. It's all fine. You know, what, what is, when has he ever earned respect? Says that little voice at the back of your mind. What is love? It's only tangentially related. Koya, in that case, I will take, I think this is probably a dodge, right? I'll take dodge over agility. Uh, sorry, dodge over, um, yeah, it's agility, isn't it? Oh uh, yeah, Gemini. Yeah, agility, and then oh, you do have dodge trained. I believe I do. Let me just double check. I do. Yes. Sure. Uh, yeah. In that case, you can have you can have an assist from uh, Mackie. Huzzah! That's pass of one degree. Laz gun, and indeed, more scarily, Laz cannon shots begin to ring out all around you. There's a uh, slight cry from behind as. Mordrico's stump is caught ever so slightly by a lasgun, uh, lasgun by a las cannon, blasting his arm off up to just below the shoulder this time. But he keeps running. Sorry, Yannickus. No, I said Jesus, that's all. Uh, we're pretty close to Terra. Regeneration tech can do wonders in the Imperium. <laughs> Fair enough. <Locking off. laughs> uh, I mean, Alexius Pollux gets his, one of his hands blown off at the Battle of Fowl and he just gets a, a a fresh new one. They don't grow on trees, you know. They do in the Imperium. I mean, yeah, when you're when it's close to the throne world, like, you get the or, good but, shit. Or supposedly, I guess, close to the warp as well. I definitely see hands growing on trees there. No, no. In the close Imperium. to the throne world, what is this warp you speak of? <laughs> the Imperium generally has pretty awesome biotech. Like, it's, it's promise, slightly lad. insane. Oh. <clears throat> and like that... The three of you arrive at the walls, slamming into them. I will take a climb roll from everyone trying to get up the walls, and we'll see who's going to climb it. I was going to climb it. Sorry, it wasn't going to be climb, was it? That's my bad entirely. No, I was just Okay, in that case, Ollie, I will take demolitions over ballistic skill at a minus 20, please. Minus 20? Yep, yep, yep. This is, remember, a fortified wall, so you're really trying to like blast through as quickly as possible. Sure, okay, so demolitions minus 20. Can I use a scrutiny roll to try and help him by identifying a potential weak spot? Yeah, roll it your scrutiny first, and if you succeed, we'll give him a plus 10. Cool. Every little helps. That's pass, one degree. Yeah, there is a visible fault line where it's been repaired recently in the wall in front of you that you're able to point out to Mackie as you're charging forwards. Cool, so that is 45 or under at a minus 10. Go on, get 100. <laughs> <laughs> My second five is today. <laughs> so, that's four DOS, right? Uh, yes, that is indeed. <laughs> that's enough for a crit success. Cool, I've only fired. This is the second shot I fired as well from the, from the melter gun. I think you found your new sec- you think you found your new backup weapon. Mm-hmm. <laughs> a construction melter. I'm going to keep this. I think I'm going to turn this into my into my signature piece it's of wood. It is poor yeah. quality. Remember. Yeah, I picked a good quality. Give it to the ad man. It, uh, it is both poor quality or just, and or just get a space marine melter yeah, space because you know melter. they're better. It's flavour. Okay, going in my personal collection anyway of my interesting weapons and things I've got on missions. 
my, my skull from the litho golem, which is also on my shoulder right now, but will soon be on my shelf. Got about you. <laughs> Terrifying surfs. <laughs> Cool. Four degrees of success. So, four happens? degrees of success. You evaporate a healthy chunk of rockrete, leaving behind a larger chunk of rockrete and a billowing cloud of superheated plasma. And again, and again, and again, and again. That's six shots. So that's the total of my clip, I think, now. Yeah, that is that is the clip out. The gun rasps, but at just that moment, you see a slight crumbling, showing you a dank corridor on the opposite side. And with a fist punch, you are able to force your way through into the interior of the spaceport wall. <coughs> God damn, I feel so cool right now. I'm just in my mind's eye, just like casually trying to just barge my way into a dark corridor, rock and lava dripping off of me. I feel very cool right now. On the opposite side, as you emerge into the uh, aforementioned corridor, rock and lava dripping off of you, a terrified human in a gas mask screeches and skitters backwards from you, but the toxic atmosphere leaks in through the hole you've made, and immediately their skin begins to blister and shrivel and peel. <laughs> to be these people. <laughs> Yeah, that's like, like the entire wall now just fucked as the atmosphere just leaks in. Oh, it's fine. It'll take ages for the atmosphere to leap in, uh, leach it, uh, leach, leak in entirely, and you'll hit the ground uh, long before that. <clears throat> you have made it inside the wall. What do? We need um, to find. We need to make our way to uh, the hangar bays. Yep. It uh, is I- not a hangar bay situation. It's more of a. I think like a. I hate to say it because not with stands, but sort of a coliseum stadium affair. So there is a, a large open space. Yeah, where they all park like a car park. <laughs> well, I mean, Voidcraft are usually very big, so you'd only have, typically, if you have like a large one coming in, then you'd only have one or two coming in at a time. Uh, this would probably be like four to six would be my guess if Voidcraft. Uh, not even. Like, this is only 600 meters across if you park at the best possible angle, which is like a destroyer and not a large destroyer oh so you mean like the uh like like actual proper void craft i was thinking more shuttles that get you up and down oh between. you can fit a shit ton of shuttles in here and that's probably more exactly. what they've got but this is uh yeah. capable of taking destroyers yeah okay okay cool yeah, yeah. uh cool we, we should head straight for the uh the open space where they're all likely parked uh i'm going to can I, hoist, can I can i hoist can i holster my my melt gun on me anywhere <laughs> Because I can, because then I have a hand free to get back my, um, presume, because I don't have any more ammo for the melter. Brother, just drop the melter. <laughs> but I'm sentimental. I think, to be fair, we did say that you grabbed the spare flasks, you had two. I don't think we did, but okay, I can take I'm it. I'm pretty sure I mentioned it. Okay, no worries. But it was I'll, a passing uh, comment. All right. I'll, I'll, put, I'll put the other flask in then. And I, I guess, like, um,. What is um, Mondrico armed with at the moment? Mondrico? Mondrico is armed with the remaining half of his chainsword. Right, in which case, because we're going to close quarters, I would like to give him my bolter, and then swap to bolt pistol and chainsword. He hefts it. Ah, thank you. I uh, ran out of ammunition at the last one. Do you have any? I have eight clips for my main bolter, so I will give him eight. Uh, I will give him eight clips for my main bolter. He sort of holds his arm up. Would you mind clipping it to my thigh? <laughs> I will. I will do as he asks. You're going to give him a hand. I'll kill you. <laughs> Is he missing the same arm as me, or could we like make one wide marine? <laughs> he's, he's missing his right arm. What arm am I missing again? It was noted, but I forget which it was. I think you're also missing your right arm, because you were missing not your sword arm, and Carl set this standard, and Carl had chainsaw in left hand, bolt pistol in right, I believe. So I think you're missing your right arm. Oh, yeah. Um, I feel like it's probably not worth bothering to find a door that leads in, and I turn to the squad, and I look at the uh, so, brother sergeant, should I just blast through the walls again, sir? Yes. Rack em and clack em. It means nothing that I wanted to say. Um, deduct, so I, deduct your remaining uh, flask of ammunition as you rapidly blast through. In fact, can I get a speedy toughness test at plus 30 from everyone in the corridor as it begins to fill up with superheated vapour and Venusian atmosphere? 
You say plus 30? Uh, I suppose plus 30 for everyone who isn't you, actually, because you're not environmentally sealed. So plus zero for you. Yeah, I made that okay. with, degree, <laughs> with an additional seven degrees of success. That is two degrees of success to me. Oh, with yeah, plus with an additional plus two because we've yeah. got unnatural toughness. There's time. So what was this? Uh, yeah, but it's, you just only add the two. You only add the two. You don't like double degrees of success with toughness. No, no, but it, it, it had plus twenty. <laughs> it was toughness yeah, I, at I plus know. thirty for you, Carl. Oh, plus thirty. Sorry, there, there we go. Yeah, I, I make it. Yeah, squeaks it. Yeah. Let's just see how did every. Yeah, okay, cool. Everyone, everyone succeed. You can't have got five dos on that, Carl. And we cap at ninety. I mean, I technically, it's like it was three degrees. Plus two from the uh, unnatural yeah. toughness. Oh, yeah, sorry, I stand corrected. You absolutely can have got five dots on that. I'm done. Because <laughs> we're space marines. Space marines. Space marines. Bargain for. I thought, I thought it was times two, even when you were like getting the standard bonus. Plus two then. No, it's. Um, plus two on degrees of success. Yeah, exactly. Uh, okay, okay, fair enough. Cool. Yeah, it's it's uh, an additional for degrees of success, and it's a multiplier where you would add it as a bonus. I see. Cool. Okay, that makes sense. The problem with crunchy splat, uh, combat splats is they're always a bit crunchy, and it can get a bit inelegant. Still, could be worse. Could be werewolf. Could be where well, I was going to say could be what of darkness. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's what, it's I, like. that's what I mean. You know, werewolf. What? Um, <clears throat> fuck, we're we doing. Could be worse. Could be mage. <laughs> I don't know, medieval mages, alright. Uh, anywho, irrelevant. Um, so, everyone in the squad is able to basically shrug this off. Mordraco is in a little bit of discomfort as, as it sort of seeps into his armor, but, you know, he'll, he'll deal, I guess. <laughs> as he's kind of like spraying the sealant up over the hole where his right arm used to be. Um, which means that Coatlemox is the one having the most trouble. But he, did you say one DOS, Creed? Uh, yeah, well, it'd be three with the unnatural. Oh, yeah, fair. Yeah, so discounting the unnatural slightly, basically in narrow success. So Coatlemox is in the most pain, but he was already in a fair amount of pain, and he's just powering on through with this. Painkillers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, he's not taking the painkillers, remember. R- not right now. He's rationing them. He's using them when he needs them. Rather than he needs constantly. them to see. Yeah, mm. or see equivalent. Chad, move. Don't replace your eyes after this. Just... Navigate by <laughs> echolocation forever. Navigate <laughs> <Okay, laughs> by echolocation and severe amounts of just, drugs. Just install the real high grade Orspex and scanner. And <laughs> I mean, I like the idea of just having tiny chainsaws all over you that just occasionally buzz just to give you that echolocation. You don't even need it. You just want it for the pure terrifying. Hidden. He's hunting someone down. You hear a. Was he a possessed <laughs> car? <laughs> Any. <laughs> <coughs> the entire squad in tow, and mostly none the worse for wear, you blast into the Phasma spaceport. If you'd got here maybe five, ten minutes ago, it would have been in chaos. Now it's just death. The people here, those who are still in the process of fleeing, are gone. The atmosphere has cooked and flensed them. Their corpses lie strewn where they fell. Many of them packing supplies, many of them half in or out of cockpits and, and rear access ways. A uh, palaver of shuttles, a, a veritable medley, scattle, scattle, scattered all around the port. What do? Uh, quick Run scan. Carbon. Which yeah. one looks the most prepared? Well, which like, one? No, which one looks like it could take five Astartes? Because something that could take yeah, five uh, normal uh, people is not going to take five suggest, Astartes. I know that's a good one, actually, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I would suggest we find the biggest one we can and maybe also try and pick up anyone so we can pick up maybe mm. any Dragon Space Marines we see on this, on this landing zone around us. Maybe. 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 <laughs> <laughs> we'll, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll see. Yeah. We'll see how close we are to the floor when we take off. <laughs> Oh, God. Oh, God. Yeah. So, yes. Um, priority. Make sure we can all fit on it, and it can fly us all. Secondary, which was the most ready. So, okay. Who's leading the search? Uh, I'll help. Who's got good perception? I'm on forty-five. I've got good perception. I'm on forty. We'll call this search over perception at plus zero. Okay. So, who's got search and can thus assist me? Because I seem to have the highest at the moment. I all have search. It's basic for us. Okay, yeah. 
So I can assist with that because I have high perception as well. Okay, so is everyone assisting me? I probably. You, uh, what's the, you, what's you, the cap on assist? It's it's two additional assists, so you can have up to a plus twenty. Okay. Uh, well, thank God I've still got one. Thank God I've still got one. Thing. Have enhanced senses as well, so you have plus ten from that. Oh, I do. Thank God. Okay, so seventy-five or under. You're echoing in it. Thank God I've got a fate. <laughs> Oh, 73, I'll take oh. it. <laughs> 91 to a 73. <laughs> oh, yeah, God. and it's a pass, I'll take it. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. The Emperor protects. He might be a bit of a dick about it, but he does protect in the end. <laughs> He's like, oh, fine. <laughs> you find it's reason protects. So. No, the Emperor protects is secular. Is it? Is it, it real? Yeah. Pretty sure it's kind it is. Of awfully close to worship. It does. I mean, oh. everyone's going to look at you a bit funny at the Space Marine party. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, for the record as well, we actually have two layers of heightened sense that stack one from our armor and one from our organs. I knew I was thinking. Oh, God. Okay, so that's an extra degree then. You were right, you, and it wasn't. Okay, there you go. I yeah. thought it was a plus 20. Yeah, you know, I, I thought, I, thought yeah. I was missing something in my earlier check, but I couldn't remember what it was. I mean, to be I fair, know. I thought it was a plus 20 general. I thought it was only from one thing, but I'm, I'm happy to hear that I'm not going mad and I didn't hallucinate that. I mean, you could have. You just you were right as well with the hallucination. So, what's your DOS there then, Benji? Still one. Uh, right? In that case, two. If I got a plus 20. No, it'd be 85. From, from, because I... 85 down to 73 oh. is still... Yeah, is still no, that's one, true. Right? Yeah. yeah, Still one. So, there is a nearby shuttle, which looks reasonably large. Uh, it's no Stormbird, but you think that in a pinch it could fit all of you. Though you are now glad that you're down, like, two Space Marine arms, because that's definitely saving you a little bit of space. <laughs> Proceeding at a full run, especially after Koya voxes that he's found a decent craft. Uh, six of you? Six of you, yes. The six of you regroup and load yourselves onto the shuttle. Mordrico levers himself into the cockpit, throwing out some baked human corpses from within, and begins sort of pulling it down half-heartedly. Or half-heartedly? Half-hazardly. <coughs> Is there room for any more space marines in the shuttle? Or is it completely full? You could, at a pinch, maybe squeeze two more people in here, but it it would be dicey. You'd have to, like, really pull them in. Mm. Yeah. We'll take off, and we'll see if there's anyone around. We're not waiting around. I don't think we can save people at this point. <laughs> Sadly. <laughs> uh, we, we killed a lot of marines. <laughs> yeah. But when we looked over the sides, and we, we could see the floor coming at us, I, I'm pretty, pretty clever. Can I figure out maybe how much longer we have until splat? You and said ten minutes when we looked over uh, the edge. Last no, time. I said ten minutes at the absolute maximum. Most. Yeah, this is a let's just get going. Yeah, and uh, that little that little voice at the back of your head, Mackie, so heartless. This is arguably maybe your fault, and everyone else is just happy, content, leaving your brothers to die. It was my fault. He's the guy who killed the guy who was whoa, holding the stick. Are, are you talking to yourself here? Yes, I'm talking to myself here. <laughs> I mean... Okay. Out loud? I mean, he owns it. I, I'm, I have an inner monologue. <laughs> this, this would be a dialogue. This would be a dialogue in that case. <laughs> Oh, okay, no, that's fine. If you wish to develop a habit of talking to yourself, that's fine. You can. I'm not. I have an inner monologue. I'm just like, I, and I have, I have already theatred this out a few times. It's like I'm just like, I didn't kill anyone. He's the one who shot the guy who was holding up the planet. So you know. All right. That's so <laughs> one, it's not even slightly what the voice in the back of your head was saying, and and two, do you realize how that looks to to your for your character development? Just just so you, we're clear here. Uh, you have a little part of you saying, wow, we're all kind of guilty, and then a much louder, overt, and more deliberate part of you going, no, it wasn't my fault. I just happened to be there, and I was just following orders. Like, <laughs> you, you, said it was, you said it was arguably my fault, and I took that to be as an Collectively. Oh, collectively, sure, yeah, fine. The way it was worded made it sound like it was my fault. <laughs> like, Mac no, why would it be your fault? You didn't shoot the guy. Exactly, it was all yeah. these other people who are now dooming your brother into a horrible death. Terrible, terrible people, but they're fine. Are they? Hey, are we the monsters? Let's um, let's take off. Who's this we? 
from uh, from the front cockpit as the rest of you try and find somewhere to strap in in the increasingly cramped rear. <clears throat> I may need to ask for some assistance up here. It's difficult with one arm. Uh, uh, well, Creed, you have tech use, don't you? Yes. Uh, Between so them, they have it too. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. The, uh, Between them, they have two good arms. How much damage do you have? Three at the moment. Okay, <laughs> got two bad. doses of pain suppressor list. <laughs> okay. okay. So you send in the other one-armed marine. There's a single okay, eyeless okay. marine. Okay. There is a I, single, I, a single yeah. comment. Oh, okay. A single comment okay. comes back over I, the box. I will also really. Go, oh wait. Wait, I suppose you can only fit one marine in the cockpit. You can, you I, I can barely you fit one marine in the cockpit. I have, I have, I think I probably have the highest ability, so I can, I'm happy to go in. Yeah, someone who's got eyes, then. Yeah, <laughs> unless you have higher agility, Benji, but I'm on no, 50. The Vox no, comes back from Mordrico. Okay, whoever is coming up here, and I don't care if it's the one-armed guy, but we, like, I need someone. Someone oh, soon. Mackie, yeah. go, now. I, 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 I go in, yeah, I go in. Wow, he's ordering you around? He is, because he's my <laughs> private sergeant, and we're in a dire situation right now. Mm, whose fault is that? <laughs> yeah, all the sergeants and all of us, but you know, none of us know. No evidence. No <laughs> strong evidence proving it's my fault. So, uh, what do I need to do? You know, I was about to say, wow, the psychologist is going to have a field day with you, but then I realised it's 40k, and one of the defining characteristics of 40k is that there are no competent psychologists. Otherwise, a lot of things would be very easy to avoid. Family <laughs> therapy for the Primarchs would have probably comprehended the entire problem. I don't need therapy. <laughs> the Primarchs it's... sat around on sofas <laughs> with a therapist in the middle, there's this tiny little man with a notepad. I need to as held in their hands. <laughs> and the emperor on the other side, just like twice the size of everyone. <laughs> Everyone's getting nosebleeds from the raw psychic emanation. Emperor, how does it make you feel? Angry crushes him with psychic might. <laughs> <laughs> That's They're not constructive to discussion. With Mackie helping him, Mordrico is able to get the shuttle to start a steady, but unfortunately somewhat slow rise. Mordrico sort of turns to you, Mackie. <clears throat> so when I said I had flight experience... My helmet just turns with a slow, sliding grate. <laughs> and looks <back. laughs> Cycling your eye lenses, right? Uh-huh. <laughs> <clears throat> experience in the simulator. <laughs> my helmet turns back away, grinding still, <laughs> looks up. Grips a little tighter on the dashboard. <laughs> I mean, on okay. an entirely different shuttle. It's more than we've got. But this I'm, I, battle, I, I, uh, no, they're on. They're not. They're on a. They're in a up there. They're on external channels within the cockpit. So this is just. I know that was. Vehicle. I know that was me saying that out of character. Yeah. But I, you know, I, I, like, I, I, how different can the vehicles possibly be? Like this button logically must send us up. As I, as I, saying, I, I, <laughs> said, I advise you to stop talking. Your flawless Lyman's ear tells you that the uh, the shuttle begin began listing sideways the second he hit the button. Can I just pull the stick the other way? No, this was go- a button. Oh, okay. Uh, Unpress it. I, un- <laughs> I I put his hand up off of it, I suppose. <laughs> oh. Perhaps this button. Uh, everyone in the uh, rear, you're not getting any of this audibly, but you can feel the shuttle jerking in different directions. It doesn't feel like it's going up, or at least your descent is certainly slowing, but not as fast as you would like. As his hand goes to reach the other button, my hand snaps out and grabs it before he gets a chance to push it. And I turn back. I don't know, I don't even look at him. I go, are you sure? As I'm looking straight ahead. He uh, looks at you. Tries to lean around with his elbow. No, but we don't have time to be sure. Jams it on the pa- uh, pa- uh, jams it on the pad, hitting several buttons at once. <laughs> the shuttle begins rocketing upwards in several directions. In the rear, as the uh, bay door is just about closing, you see the doors to the doors, the great gate to Phasma Spaceport, get blasted inwards as your shuttle is rocketing up into the sky and through it. Atop a chimera is the gas-masked form of your Australian colonel. Australian colonel? Wait, who, who, who is that? 
Do you remember your um, attached imperial? Army. Exactly, your attached imperial army unit that you instructed to follow you. <laughs> <laughs> Would like to vox back down. We're going back for him. <laughs> what? Wait, no. Like, didn't he burst through like the gates of the spell? Like, like I'm confused. Yeah. He, no, so as done. as your craft was uh, sorry, as your craft was lifting out of Phasma Spaceport, you're maybe fifty, sixty meters up in the air at this point, or at least you've started to rise, and the the uh, hive city is falling below you. His command chimera, along with the remaining stragglers of was it fifty first, the thirty first? Let me check. Uh, shall we go back? The 31st Australians had just blasted through the big Jurassic Park 1-esque in, uh, doors, gates that lead into the uh, uh, space okay. force. I'm amazed they're still alive. Yeah. Shall we? Um, there are not I, I like many them. of them. Uh, I think there were quite a few in that regiment, and it's down to one chimera and a couple of people sat on the sides. Well, they have half a chance. There's more can, ships down there, right? Exactly. There are more ships down there, <laughs> but I don't know if they can fly any of them. Uh, is there any space in you our shuttle? There and is. There's no room in ours. There is a space. <laughs> I mean, we can fit like four people in, right? Yeah. We yeah. also don't actually know how to fly this vehicle. We've got a guy who's vaguely competent. Mondraco I don't know if they've got anyone who can fly. Mondraco Voxes, Voxes from the front cabinet, uh, cabinet compartment. Vaguely! <laughs> I, I don't mean to be a dick, but like risking all of us as space marines for like just some regular like yeah. soldiers. I agree. It's why. Like, how close is the ground? Uh, Fifty meters. Oh, sorry, the ground no. below you. Uh, ground, ground. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, now that you're high enough, uh, they've got less than a minute. How long did it take us to get up this high? Uh, sorry, less than a minute before you hit the ground. But also, do remember that. This is a car crash situation. You are not a flat pancake hitting the ground. You are a hive that is going to crumple and explode as it hits the ground. Oh, yeah, so you might have 20 seconds extra before the imp- after the bottom impacts the ground. Yeah, the out thing, back. Thing's Get quite, in a shuttle now! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get on radio back. Get in a shuttle now! You've got a minute. Then you're dead. Wow, the Andrew dead part. And is gonna... <laughs> I, I, I'd like to, um, with Sorry, the just, help just, of... just to double check, so I didn't quite hear. Were you sending that over the Vox, or were you loud hailing that out the back of the shuttle as you fly away? I presumed Both. over the Vox. <laughs> Both. Um, and, but I'd like, and then <laughs> the after that, I'd like to, like, um, uh, who, who helped uh, find this shuttle? Because we looked at a few others, correct? Me. Me. Okay, you're not helping fly direct them to ones that looked semi-ready. Semi. That's true, actually, because I got two degrees of success, but that was on finding a shuttle that us. would fit Space Marines. Um, yes. I presume there are other shuttles down there that I would have seen that would fit them, you, but wouldn't fit us. In that case, you start desperately boxing and loud-hailing coordinates out, or at least loud-hailing until the shuttle seals up uh, coordinates out the back as you begin to fly away. The Vox networks are still thoroughly jammed, not least because there's a shit ton of traffic streaming between the fleet and the flotilla of aircraft or aeronautic craft. Can we roll anything for this? To make, to, can we roll anything on no, this? No, you, you already got a DOS on this. I think, um, I think this is probably a roll on their behalf. They're NPCs, so okay. we'll say 30 or under. What? Who would uh, like to roll to see if Derek survives? What was your thing in this? Uh... uh are we able to send um, precise coordinates over um, the, the Vox? Not necessarily super helpful for them. They're, they don't know how to fly a plane. Um, no, no uh, the, the, the uh, coordinates uh, of the plane. Yes, exactly. We can just ping. We can send a... It's, it's uh, almost not the problem they're facing here, honestly. Okay, okay. to grab a shuttle and get going, and they don't okay. know how to get going. Uh, and and, and I mean, I can, you, you can tell can them... drive primaries. <laughs> It's not the same thing. Okay, who it's would not like, the same thing. Who would like to roll on behalf of the Imperial Army? I'll roll. Get a one. Get a one. I'll tell you what, if you get a one, they bring the Chimera. <laughs> Just... <laughs> oh, no. Do they have fate? They do not have I fate. I have a fate. I have a fate. You, yeah, you do, but you're not rolling for you. You're rolling for the Imperial Army. Oh. That's two doff. Meaning... Oh. That uh, Colonel Derek dies on Venus. Ah, uh, we shall uh, remember you, Colonel Derek. Tried. <laughs> tried, we did. Some of us vaguely. I honestly didn't think that there would be any humans left. 
Like, I'm kind of surprised that they were still like, they didn't have void sealed suits. But they have gas masks and that automatically makes their skin immune. Yeah. And, but they're, they're also um, Imperial Guard. They're not Imperial Army. Army. Well, they're Imperial Army, yeah. They're not, they're not Solar Auxilia, so it's. They don't have void, void sealed suits, it's the thing. It's why I expected them to all be dead. They might have said, like, their armor's just about good enough to keep. They're probably in terrible, terrible pain and they're bubbling underneath. It's not it, about but... the armor being good enough, it's about it being sealed. No, I, I get what Ollie's saying, though, as well. Like, they're, they're, they're probably not in a great nick. Well, they probably weren't in a great nick, but they powered on through because they thought they could. And also, even though they're not Marines, they're still the Imperial Army at the outset of the Great Crusade, and that means that they're going to be fairly tough motherfuckers. They're, like, one step down from the old Terran techno-barbarians, who were fierce. Your craft begins to lift off up into the air. You made it just about in time, which means you are afforded a classic view as the hive, Mare Yasht, impacts the Venusian sur- Venusian Venusian surface. Millennia of history, an entire civilization wiped out in an instant. A world killed. Hopefully the first and last time that this will happen in the nascent Imperium of Man. (laughs) Hmm. Did they manage to shuffle, by the way? I I had to disappear for a second. Sorry? Did the Imperial Guard, the Imperial Army get... Oh yeah, no, they they went off on their own little adventure, like they're in a better place now. They go to the great farm in the sky. Yeah. Great metal spires erupt from within the hive's body, as its underlevels are punctured, forced out through the exterior. It crumples, collapses, and explodes, huge reactions going off all over the place, the mere size of its impact blasting a colossal hole in the Venusian atmosphere, blowing sight and uh, blowing sight, blowing smog and fog and caustic atmosphere away for hundreds of kilometers in every direction affording the fleet a thoroughly clear image of Venus's death. You are one of a bare handful of non-military craft to escape. I'm I, mean, going I wouldn't, to I wouldn't worry too much about it. The 16th, the, not 16th, the 16th, yeah, yeah, the 16th just killed Oriya, so <laughs> it's not like Space Marines haven't got form for killing civilizations. I'm going to uh, vox up to presumably the strike cruiser that brought us in and you know, I think it's just a light cruiser. Actually, you don't have a strike cruiser at this point. Oh, okay, the light cruiser. And, and you know, exist, yeah, Sorry, I, I'm going to message to the light cruiser. Presumably, I have their Vox network saved. Or I Vox don't network. think the shuttle really has the power for that. Unfortunately, you just kind of got to fire, uh, fire up there. You just kind of got to like blast off in that direction and hope your friend or foe, uh, friend or foe codes get you through. Mm-hmm. Fair enough. Mm-hmm. Do we have a name for the light cruiser? I don't remember if we did. Uh, we probably did. Oh, it's the Obsidian Heart. Not the Venusian Demise. I mean, you Not could yet. rename it Venus's Death if you like. <laughs> well, I mean, you can't actually. It's your, it's your captain's ship, but, you know. We'll see. <laughs> Look at me. I am the captain now. Next campaign. Uh, are you going to be pushing to be the captain next campaign? No. <laughs> I'm going to be the quartermaster. It's probably down to a pretty straight uh, Ooh, sorry. Quartermaster? You think you'll have more control over the inventory than the admin? I <laughs> Get like... the hell out of my quartermaster, you peasant! <laughs> uh, I, I, know I, I know I've done my best to train you all to refer to it as the Adeptus Mechanicus in 40k, but this is uh, pre-heresy, so it's still the Mechanicum at this point. There is no Adeptus. Wonderful. Are we currently pre-packed of Mars? Uh, no, it's just been made. Okay. It's like um, a couple of years old. In our canon, at least. Do we get blasted out of the sky? <laughs> I presume not. I don't know. <laughs> and then the party all died. Yeah, new characters. All in space. You'll now be playing as the reincorporated 31st Australians following the heroic martyrdom. No. <clears throat> you are not blasted out of the skies. Instead, you are escorted by a pair of uh, void fighter craft. 
once you get within range and brought aboard the Obsidian Heart. Where a detachment of uh, armsmen await, ready to blast apart potential war witch refugees. When they see that inside are only marines, medical crews are rushed out. On the one hand, this feels like a fairly natural point to end the session. On the other hand, does anyone have anything they want doing? You are back on your light cruiser temporary base of operations, and the hangar bay... You've been brought into an isolated hangar bay, actually, because they weren't sure if you were going to be hostile or not, but there are sort of nearby hangar bays which are reasonably accessible from where you're standing. Um which throng with activity as the rest of your company, or at least what remains of it, uh, is brought aboard, along with the meagre remainder of their attached Imperial Army units. So I, I want to go to Medbay. Uh-huh. Yeah, I want to follow them like, and learn. I need the Medbay as well, actually, yeah, to be fair. I need the Medbay as well. I'm just uh, hanging on there. <laughs> but I would like to know the casualties. I want to get some information on how much of, uh, of Chapter 4... Chapter six and Legion, um, actually six. before before I go for medbay, I'd like to go uh, and debrief immediately. Go to medbay, we can we can debrief after you've received treatment. I'm uh, going straight to medbay and I'm staying there for a while. I really want to play the injured victim here when it comes to the reporting. <laughs> um, no, I, I'm going to give uh, <laughs> like and is there like okay. key bullet bulletins? This is what happened down there quick kind of debrief so they know the situation. So, uh, Cusco and Coatlmox head off to Medbay with Mordrico <laughs> sort of trailing after them. Uh, Mackie and Koya, it sounds like, your eyes catch as it looks like Sergeant Nazim is going to head off to Medbay with them initially but then sort of sort of ski- uh, skiers? Steers off to the side and starts heading over towards where Captain Yatakawa can be seen discussing things with members of his command squad. I'm going to go over to Captain Yatakawa. Yeah, I think I'll be going with the captain. Oh, I see. Everyone, uh, <laughs> as, as you approach, Sergeant Nazim, in the back of your head, they never do trust you. <laughs> I'm going over because I want to know how many people died. I'm going over to give a full debrief report, much like... Uh... My commanding officer. I, 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 sure I, my fo- my footage is also on the record. I need to get debrided. It is so on the record. Please. You have a cam. <laughs> I mean, if, not, if you were going to want it there, if you were wanting to wipe it, now would be the time. <laughs> no, I think you wipe. Okay, so as the three of you approach, Captain Yatakau turns. His uh, helmet is already off, and his eyebrows shoot up. Sergeant Dazim. Your colours. If you recall, your livery was blasted off. You are a featureless, smoking grey armour. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> I forgot what did Suit that now. <laughs> Response? Your commanding officer is uh, clearly uh, displeased. Oh god, okay. An accident in the field, sir. A hail of lights gone fire. I asked the think. sergeant. Sergeant Nazim, your colours. Uh, we under. We took heavy fire, sir. Uh, we got blasted to so heavily that they stripped the colours from our armour. Oh, Your sorry, armor, he's supposed sir. to be fucking um, Stephen Toast, isn't he? Is, is it just me? Is it just my colours? Isn't it? Because I, I, I yes. take the fire from one else. The other person whose yeah. colours you can't see are Coatlmox, because he was initially covered in gore, and then he got exploded slash flash fried, so now he's like yeah. black and gore uh, covered. Uh, but at least he's got the issue... At least he's got the excuse of being heavily wounded to yeah. actually really make it. Exactly. Yeah. My, my, my armor's just that hanging on. It's what's causing you to hang on. I think we would pour you out of that armor later. Yeah, it's probably fused to me in a few bits. The captain uh, cricks his neck. <clears throat> still. I mean, still. Did us to carry a paint can around with us? <laughs> Said out of character. <laughs> <clears throat> So, what is it you're after? Uh, I wanted to give you a brief uh, rundown of our mission, sir. He uh, rests his chainsaw against the side of his stormboat. I see. You're telling me that you got oh so far ahead. Sir, no. Third company Neither. was pinned down. Sir, sir we, are, we are saying that. Because third company sucks. 
I I thought in a in a bragging way. <laughs> so far ahead. <laughs> Uh, would you not feel comfortable bragging? Like, you belong to a competitive legion. Um, I don't think it's uh, the right place for bragging. I'm, I'm just going to put this out here, Nicholas. How does your squad treat you with, uh, generally when you, they feel that you're saying something nonsensical? Pretty well, at sure. the moment, I'm just doing sort of saying stuff. Yeah, it sounded like that last one was <laughs> Out whisk- the side of his mouth. Exactly. It's like, we, did, we get that, did you get that far ahead? No. We did, sir. Yeah, I think that last... I took that as being mentioned to the sergeant, as the captain had already hushed you the first time you spoke. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was out the side of my mouth. It's yeah. like, yeah, we did get that forehead, sir. Um, so, yes, they, it doesn't feel like they treat you with respect, yeah, Nicholas. So, you are at liberty to pass that up the chain. Oh, I will later on, but... Um, sir, I, I, I want to give a brief rundown of what happened, basically. Uh, oh, just so bit of points. Says that little voice in the back of your head. Um, mission complete, sir. Uh, so he folds his arms at that. <coughs> Again, we were pinned down. Unless you're trying to take sole credit for whatever happened to the anomalous power plant. We are, Nick. We did that. Go on. Sort of did. We are, um, we are, brother sergeant. We have the we are. to prove it. <laughs> okay, okay. Jesus Christ. Guys. I mean, because um, it sounds like you need to take a fear test, honestly, at this rate. Like, you're, you're very clearly floundering in front of your captain. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, I'll just presume that you've still got um, a and box open. One, one clear source that um, was operating. Shadrenators were not active, but there was... Um, the ship generators were very active, so that was. No, they were. The void shield generators were very active. The captain motions all three of you to sod off. I don't care. I'll review your logs afterwards. I'm in no mood for your nonsense. Oh. Okay. So th- they weren't active. That was the suspicious thing because the what? guy they were what? so active. As... That was what I was doing the As entire the... time you were fighting him. I was disabling. No, I see what your Nicholas is saying. Your Nicholas's point here is that the what you thought was a shield generator either wasn't or, or wasn't active in the same way that you thought it was. Uh, whereas Benji's point is, but there were a shit ton of shield generators in that room which were active. And why would you say imply that those weren't there when we knew they were there? So you're both correct in your own ways. And as a result, the little voice in the back of both of your heads as you're walking away is spitting poison about the other, pointing out that it's I would say as well, we didn't think there were shield generators in there. We thought it was a power plant. You also didn't know it was very heavy. No. Uh, sorry, Ollie. There were meant to be void shield generators in there, as well as something else. And I remember, I don't remember them specifically ever being mentioned as being active, as in turned yeah, on. I, I think All I checked, the they were on. were on. Sorry? Uh, no, uh, you're Nicholas, you're getting confused, I think. Hmm. We can always listen back to the episode. Yeah, we can back. I, 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 I thought I, I checked like if they were uh, on or not. I know they're operational, but I don't think they were on. That's why we've, I wanted to focus on um, what's his face who's the psychic shit. You know what? Should we say? Uh, does anyone have any? Well, I think I think it's probably worth because we're probably going to have like a post sesh or post sesh post mission sesh next time, right? So I think what I would like to hear in the final six minutes of this session is in maybe two lines or less. Who do you credit with the victory this time around, and who do you blame? Like, is there anyone you'd really go, yeah, this person should be commended, or no, this person should be thrown under the bus? And these are all conducted in well, they're like abstracted posts. Uh, post-mission interview stuff, which means no interruptions, no calling anyone or anything, uh, and they're all conducted in an environment where none of you can hear the rest in character. Who would like to go first? You can assume you've had your medical treatment, any one of you at this point. I'm going to heal myself up. Does it have to be only one person for each? No, you can you can put as many or as few as you want into any um, any one of those, or anything else, basically. All right. It's I'll fault um, Benji's and all these characters for disputing commands frequently. And I'll celebrate our commander for killing the guy who sunk the whole city. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure that's going to work in my favour. <laughs> okay. And uh, Cusco. 
Do you have anyone you want to nominate or condemn? Sorry, mutant function. Ah. Um, I, I would simultaneously um, condemn the uh, constant um, dismissive actions of uh, Mackie and Koya, but also at the same time praise Koya's uh, interactions with the Imperial Army. Um, I would like to note the commander's hesitancy and uh, indecision a lot of the times, and uh, note myself having to take charge in such actions as to <laughs> walk through a door, for example. <laughs> Man, fucking Koya dishing out the back... Uh, Koya, Kuzco dishing out the back knives. <laughs> no, Ollie, we're doing you last. <laughs> that, was, that was me being, like, spicy. I wasn't yeah, trying to say yeah, I want to go home. Fine. Okay. No, actually, we should probably do the squad sergeant last, right? I think that's fair. Benji, anyway. Yeah. I will praise basically everyone in the squad for their own various means. <clears throat> Quattle Mox and Nazi- Sergeant Nazim are fine warriors. Uh, Kuzco is an adept, an adept soldier. Mac, brother Mackies was excellent as a heavy support slot. However, I would condemn the sergeant as being unsuited to tactical command, despite his fearsome, fearsome war, uh, fearsome, fearsome combat skills. Okay, and uh, Mackie. That's professional, if you ask me. <laughs> Mackie. Oh, oh, oh! I will commend uh, Benji. For their characters... Character names, please. So this is, this is an in-character exercise. Yeah, yeah, but I just couldn't remember the character name as well. Benji's character I, is Koya. Koya. I commend Koya for their uh, excellent fire support and tactical awareness. Uh, I commend the entire squad for their willingness to give me their grenades. Um, I am both going to com- commend and... Uh, what was the other one? Condemn. Commend and condemn the sergeant. Commend him for when he took charge. The charge was good and a pl- the plan was solid. However, I condemn him for being uh, n- not always able to react as quickly to a situation as one would hope in a war zone. Um, and being dismissive sometimes of suggestions, but also towards the end, con- I will um, commend him for opening up two suggestions. I think. Oh, no. Am I the only one who condemned who mentioned the sergeant? <laughs> so I say, you feel really bad. You are the only one who mentioned that yet. <laughs> I misread that. Wow, we were going for the uh, I, I do, I do find it interesting that no one has attempted to praise themselves so far. I was going to try and do it retroactively, but I felt like I praised myself. Oh, yeah, no, that's true. Sorry. Cusco did praise himself. <laughs> I praise myself for getting the quality of kills over the quantity of kills. You, you got the quantity really high. <laughs> you killed yeah, so many people on that beach. Well, I've had to switch over to quality now. <laughs> Nick's run up to me again. I uh, I think, unfortunately, you've uh, got stuck in a silver medal slot on both fronts. Uh, Coatlemox was beating you on quality. If you'll recall. Yeah. Well, it's fine. Uh, yeah, but I'm, I'm, mentioned I'm, it, I'm, I'm done with that. <laughs> and... Finally, last but not least, Sergeant Nazim, is there anyone you would condemn and anyone you would compliment? Uh, I would commend heavily Kwasamox, uh for his unblinking bravery uh, and uh, strength of will and character to power through even the most bloody of situations. Um, I would like to uh, commend... Uh, Cusco for his medical prowess and uh, amazing thought process of just go through the walls. Um, the ability <laughs> to think outside the box um, allowed us to get to the spaceport um, in time to get back here and probably saved us uh, a life or two. Um, uh, I would also like to uh, commend uh, Mackies for his um, Dedication to laying down the fire, um, both on enemies and on buildings. Um, uh, unblinkingly uh, efficient in his slaughter. Um, uh, I would like to commend uh, uh, Koya on uh, his suggestions and thoughts. Um, but equally, I would like to condemn him heavily for trying to undermine uh, my authority through the entire mission. Uh, even though uh, his calls were correct and good, um, they were done in a manner to try to undermine my authority. Uh, 
and <laughs> to try to take uh, command away from myself um, <laughs> without running anything through me first as well. Um, uh, and I something through you. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I would also like to acknowledge um, my faults uh, that at times uh, I could be slow and indecisive um, and that I realize this is something that I must work on uh, as a squad leader. Damn, uh, so bad now. And also that I should try to work on my interactions with my, rest of my squad mates. Um, and this is something I will endeavor to do in future. Uh, and that all I can do is strive to make uh, the rest of my squad proud and uh, feel that I deserve their loyalty. Can I amend mine? No, these these are all all taken independently. I, I think. feel so bad. Interesting, <laughs> interesting, interesting move from Nazim condemning. I himself. couldn't, I couldn't stop fucking laughing when it just, it just the fact you you praised me and then condemned me. But then said I was right whilst condemning me. <laughs> it's like well, I, got I condemn you for back. I mean, I he kept back. Sh- he kept back chatting me. He was right, but he kept back chatting me. Am I the yeah. only person no, no, who no, really was it? stifling giggles when young Nicholas unblinkingly praised the man whose eyes exploded? <laughs> no, no, <laughs> I was his <laughs> unflinching <laughs> bravery. To, to clarify, it wasn't the back step. It was uh, doing things without going through me and Clee trying to undermine me. It's not. I didn't mention back chatting <laughs> once in that. I, 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 I you. It's, not the, it's not the fact that your orders were good. It's the fact they weren't his orders. <laughs> Mm-hmm. I so I think that. we've got some interesting stuff out of this. So I'm going to try and use this to build like who we have in charge next uh, next season, next season, next uh, campaign. And it's an interesting one because I thought it was going to be more clear cut and like meme ganging uppiness, but no, there's a lot of mixed opinions going on there, like complex thoughts. Who to thunk it? Looks <laughs> like we have them sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> that's a good place to leave it. Which means reminders for next sessions. I don't have anything that I'll use it now. Uh, Creed well, passed me in. Passed me out. <laughs> <laughs> Immediately. We found a thing. Immediately. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'd we like will. the reminder that we are human beings occasionally uh, able to do complex thoughts. To form that's complex. not a reminder, Ali, you're just memeing. No, I say, Benji? Uh... We will be watching your interest, your career with great interest, young, uh, whatever the blooming Iron Warrior's name is. <laughs> um, Mordrico. Okay. Mordrico? Mordrico. Mordrico. Yeah, Mordrico. Mordrico um, is a great um, lad. Can I inquire over bionic parts? I'll inquire after. <laughs> yes. I'm not quite sure he liked the present we gave him with the device he uh, asked us to stick on with Aristide. Sh- Aristide? No. Uh, Winterscale ship, but you know. Ah, fun times with Mordrico. What's he up to now? What do we leave him doing? He's off on an extended Black Crusade plot that we will almost certainly never do the rest of. <laughs> oh. yeah, I'd like to play Black Crusade again with uh, the Wednesday guys that year. It would be a laugh. Black Crusade is a lot of fun, but that was like a nine stage prophecy. We did stage one, and it took a year and a half. So <laughs> I'd, have to, I'd have to scale the future ones down a bit. <laughs> <laughs> nine step prophecy it's a simple nine step prophecy here at Zinch Pyramid Schemes we sell you the future you want uh, any <laughs> other spoopy uh, or Ollie and Creed are arguing over who gets the access to all the flashy bits in the armory <laughs> <laughs> it will be me <laughs> <laughs> because I have the bigger guns <laughs> Yes, yes, and I'll take care of them and make sure your ammo works and that they don't right. explode. We'll just make sure you're in the hospital. Just, you know, maybe just, you know, if you're in the hospital longer, maybe... Any, you know. any other reminders for next session? Um, I would like to set up a display... Uh, what's it? Um, yeah, display in my room or my locker or wherever Creed I Creed already gave the game away. I feel like my armor's going to end up looking like desk pack. You know, like, shit all over. It was glued to the of Um, could I have the reminder unswervingly reinforce the sergeant? Are you cut out for me, Carl? Oh, unswervingly reinforce the sergeant. Oh, right. Sorry. 
But now you want to know. Oh, yeah, I mean, in private. Like, I mean, I'll stab people in the back quite happily. <laughs> like. oh. uh, any other reminders for next session? No, I don't think so. No? Cool, yeah, that feels like a good amount. Right. Uh, questions? Anything anyone was narratively unclear of in that session? Is everyone following the plot? Uh, it's not so much, I suppose, it's a type of narrative question. Are we now done with this campaign once the next session wraps up? Um, maybe. I, I guess it kind of depends. Honestly, I, I'm a little bit tempted to, you know, have a bit of fun aboard the light cruiser or something, like get to know some other NPCs. I don't know. We'll have a thing. There's other stuff to do in the solar system. Yeah, we're, we probably not gonna do another camp- we're probably not, not going to do another military campaign before you leave, but like... I don't know, is there, is there anything anyone desperately wants to do whilst you're hanging about in Seoul? Go high-five the moon? I don't think so. I mean, I'd like to high-five the moon. I like to oh. shoot the moon with the largest Volkite weapon I can find. Take that, you dirty moon. I'm pretty sure Luna's like some kind of outpost or something. Yeah, it's full of gene cults. <laughs> not for much longer. Yeah, it's not so full of them there. at the moment. It's been it's been pacified and the cults harvested. Um, I want to see the M's. I mean, arguably, yeah, right. Like you fought on the. Yeah, we could probably do like a big award ceremony. I should really be giving out medals or something, right? You can actually get medals. Uh, they do exist in um, the rites of battle. Really? They give you like. Bonuses and stuff. They're called. I mean, I'm, 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 unlikely, bonuses. I'm unlikely to give you medals to give you bonuses, but I think it would be kind of fun to, um, what's it called? Track uh, medals earned through different campaigns, right? Yeah, I, I, I think so. I think they're, so. They're deeds or distinctions. They're one or the other. Uh, but unfortunately, rights of battle has no bookmarks because it's not very good. We could um, link the ceremony to us getting to our proper. Um career thingies, what are they called? Specialities. Oh, no, there'll be a little time skip there and we'll have some downtime stuff. Ah, right. I guess we could do downtime stuff as well, like in the lead up to the next uh, campaign. Oh, I suppose we'll, we'll talk it over and do some some thinking. Any other narrative questions? Sorry. No? Cool. Uh, Ooh, sorry. Do we know yet, or can we know yet, how many other marines, if any, made it off? Yeah, that was going to be my question, actually. Uh, um, I think the majority... But ultimately, your losses there were probably in the like low thousands, which is quite a lot. Which and legion had... took the most losses? Yeah, is it... it number six by any chance? <laughs> it's almost certainly number six. Yeah, like Legion Two had pushed, uh, Legion Four hadn't pushed as far as anyone else, and started pulling out in good order. Uh, legion Two started pulling out immediately. Everyone knew what was up, and probably therefore also preserved the most amount of army lives. Uh, and Legion 6 was absolutely refusing to pull out. Yeah, so it would have been probably like a few thousand between Legion 2 and Legion 4, and then maybe double that again that- um, lost out of Legion 6, arguably yeah. more. Because remember, these weren't the entire legions deployed on the beach. These were multiple chapters deployed on uh, at Mir- the Miranda's Beach, and there were other um, like a few other key target landings scattered across the hives. What strength are we at now? Because they're much higher, like 100,000 per legion or something like that right it, now, right? It's within the vicinity of that. So give or take like 50,000 or a, tens of, a few tens of thousands around. Okay, so, so, so we've lost like a percentage, and but, and, uh, but not something that's overly going to decimate us. Whereas Legion 6, sorry, uh, Chapter 6. No, that was Legion lost. 6. Or Legion Six may, may have lost like a, a, a yeah, large. Legion Six more- lost an excessively large chunk because they were not willing to follow even basic orders or interpretation. I thought the landing zone was going to be completely fucked, and none of them were going to make it. So this is much better than I expected. Yeah, no. I thought they, you were going to say like five Marines made it out. <laughs> no, so uh, so. <laughs> Basically, what happened is they took a shit ton of the army transports off world, so they 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 left the army out to dry. Um, oh. But they are the army; they are kind of expendable. They're somewhat less expendable at this point. Those are actually much worse losses within Seoul. Um, you don't have overwhelming numbers yet, and also the Seoul troops generally are uh, better overall because Seoul is an extremely special case technologically and socially. Uh, socially. 
were the best. The rain. It's less the best and more like there was a lot fiercer, terrifying competition. Sol has been through the some of the worst that the Age of Strife had to offer, basically. So Sol has an immense amount of resources left for people to scrap over. Hmm. That makes sense. And yeah. the last, the last ones standing tend to be the toughest. Yeah, exactly. Like, uh, what's it called? The the Mechanicum, even at the height of its or height ish of its power during the Age of Strife, is described as not. They mostly don't raid terror. They go there occasionally, and part of that is because the raiding parties they do send out don't tend to return, because even disunited terrors, uh, techno barbarians are, are terrifying. So, any other narrative questions? No? Cool. Feedback. Anything you liked, anything you disliked, anything you'd like to see more of or less of next time. Um, it's a really good session. I enjoyed that a lot. More road yeah. trader cameos. <laughs> um, I mean, how do I put this? Like, in a good way, it's nice when you have those sorts of moments where it's like, um, uh, the Imperial Army guys appearing like right at the end, and it's just like, sorry guys, we got a bow. Like, that sort of like emotional attachment moment, but at the same time, I don't want to see them die! I I really because he's named Derek right and and Derek was the same name or the Imperial Army uh, Colonel yeah he was the guy from the uh, first um, Dark Heresy campaign exactly mm. it was your very first ever pet NPC as a group right. the first um, oh um, the friggin Judge Dread people I can't yeah. remember their name Arbite yeah and and so I was expecting a, a like an almost walk through hell attitude to him because he shared that name and it didn't really happen. And I I fully agreed with everyone saying, yeah, no, we can't risk our lives to maybe save whoever's left in that chimera. If we, if we fuck up, we're all dead. We would have gone back if we could. We tried to get him into a, uh, into a transport. It's fine. There will never be another world destroyed in the name of the Imperium. This is all going to be okay. Ollie? Uh, this is a slightly random aside, but Deathwatch Rites of Battle actually has full-on Titan rules as well. Yeah, there's one Warhound Titan, if I recall correctly. Yeah, yeah. But it's it, like it's not full-on Titan rules. It's a Warhound described from the perspective of a space marine. Yeah, its weapons don't do as much damage as I'd expect, but they have very. It is a weapons. Warhound Titan. They are literally for scouting. Still though, like two D ten, three D ten. Would expect more. Um, are you looking at the Mega Bolter? Uh, plasma Blast Gun, uh, the Vulcan, Vulcan Mega Bolter, Double Barrel Turbo Laser. What's that one page? only does 40, 10 plus 30. Which is a lot, but you know. Page? Uh, 186 on Rights of Battle. This isn't important, though, it's just the random aside. <laughs> but yeah, uh, the thing I was looking for, though, is that you do get, um, accolades and honors and stuff like that. And that does, and it gives you like, like influence modifiers, I think. Give you um, requisition modifiers because you get more fame. <laughs> yeah, yeah, something get like pimp- that. More pimping gear, I believe. Yeah. So this is actually because I would actually like to use the proper requisition and stuff like that rules because it seems like that'd be a fun way to like role play just how good we're getting. Yeah, we can we can look into that. Sorry. Uh, so the plasma blast gun is is two d ten plus twenty pen eight. Yeah, which is a lot of damage, but you would expect a Titan-sized plasma gun to be doing, like, like insta-kills and infantry sort of thing. Uh, I mean, that like, is an insta-kill. That will, even if you roll do- uh, snake eyes, that will kill any human. Exactly, but like, why is it just not insta-kill? I don't know, it just seems, seems like they've, 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 try- they've tried doing what they did in Dark Heresy a little bit, where they tried to make massive weapons have, like, like scaled... Damage output. It, it doesn't is, really, really work. It is a fun. little bit low, but also it is only a scout titan. And the Vulcan Mega Bolter is it's only it's only two D ten plus thirteen. But also remember, it has a twenty by twenty um, diameter area. I suppose, yeah. So yeah. you can you can again, it'll it'll chew up infantry. And the turbo laser destructor. Uh, the, uh, is 4d10 plus 30 and has a functional range of several miles. So, And it's also twin-linked and blast 8, which means you can use it to snipe tanks. Yeah. Okay, to be fair, that's pretty good then. Yeah. yeah. But I think I think all the other stuff... You gotta, like, because, it, because of the way the wound system works and the D100 systems in general, cramming yeah. bigger damage numbers tends to just give you fairly boring combat. So yeah. what the, the Titan 
rules that they presented here are to try and give you titan weapons that do something specific rather than are just killing. If you go up to an actual mainline titan, then yeah, it probably should just be killing you immediately most of the time. The yeah, only thing I've ever seen in Dark Heresy myself. that ever actually just says, no, you don't get a roll, you just die, is um, Orbital Bombardment. You don't roll to survive it, you just die. Uh, and generally, you don't roll to see what you kill either. You roll to see where you hit, and then wherever you hit, whatever's in it, unless it has void shielding up, dies. Anywho, what we're doing? Any other feedback? No, cool. Uh, and I uh, thank you for the note, Carl. It was very nice. Um, cool. So let's do some XP. Ah, there we go. Plot progress. Do you feel like you made any significant plot progress this session? And if so, what? Uh, we escaped. Kablooey! We brought compliance to Venus. Venus is we, compliance. We made a desert and we called it peace. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> not wrong! <laughs> Jesus. Where's that from? It's Tacitus. Ah. Or, well, it, it's Tacitus claiming to be writing char- characters. Craticus? <laughs> uh, Craticus. Character development. Does anyone feel like they developed their character this session? Uh, ish. I'd say young Nicholas developed his character a bit, becoming very introspective. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm super down for introspective, uh, like, I'm in command, but I'm willing to learn from my faults, but you still have to respect me, uh, respect me, Nazim. <laughs> Nazim, killer of the cloud district. I, I'm like, I'm almost, oh yeah, I'm totally giving several of you nicknames after this. People who really earned them, I feel, are getting them. Um... What was I going to say? I'm, I'm kind of in two minds, because on the one hand, I want to have, like, the brass decide your command order, and I'll, I'll put someone manually in charge, but on the other hand, I'm kind of tempted to open it up for voting for who should be captain next campaign. I mean, is rotational command stuff, like, a common thing in 40k? Not really. No. But, uh, so, if, if one of you was captain next campaign, then what would functionally have happened is Nazim would have been pr- likely demoted and one of you was promoted over him in place. Mm-hmm. Or, actually, I, I get the uh, librarian stuff next one, don't I? So, it's entirely the possible. Librarian, I, I, the I, the I, librarians yeah, will be set up. Exactly. Time. You'll have librarian stuff, but the librarians hasn't been set up. Oh, Okay. But the Library of Omnis is a thing, and that's a thing we definitely shouldn't be going in, because that would kill us very quickly. That's fine. Maybe. Just a sail around it. I've heard that works well. <laughs> uh, so, yes, anyone nominating character development? On Young Nicholas, I don't know. We, we all... We were playing our characters, but I don't know how much they developed. That's, that's fair. I mean, I'm going to note, like, uh, Mackie's decaying mental state. What? I've not got a decaying mental state. Uh, hands up everyone in the chat here who argued with themselves internally. Do you never argue with yourself in your internal yeah, I would say it was using... more like... Sorry. Um, well, i say from my perspective, it, it was one of those things where you'd, like, have a sudden moment of doubt and then you just, like convince yourself otherwise. Exactly, exactly. And, and right. most other people, they get these little southern, or most of the people so far in the squad have had these little moments of doubt or indecision, and their response isn't to immediately squish that shit right back down into their psyche. They let it in a little bit. They let it percolate. It was a let... misunderstanding. I thought you were blaming me specifically for it. It was, it was an out-of-character misunderstanding rather than an in-character thing. <laughs> After I uh, realised I it. mean, you're the one who said you'd talk to the voice already several times, Ollie. I do not remember this. This is the part where I feel awkward about admitting that I have full-on conversations with myself. I mean, I oh, do yeah, too, no, I do but that. I don't know if it's healthy. Is the thing? It's it's no, it's I do it healthy. healthy. It is, it's considered healthy to talk to yourself, as long as you're not. Um... As long as you don't talk back. Yeah. <laughs> you only need to start worrying when someone answers. Yeah, and it's not your voice. But the worst thing is, is like when I used to get like really high occasionally there would be like a delay between me realizing it was my own thought and just being like wait a sec well, to be fair, I, 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 don't, I don't think that's you being mad i think that's you just being high as fuck it does sound like that uh what was i gonna say thing yeah okay so i won't put mackie's decaying mental state for for the moment but i'm 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 eyeing you ollie if you if you keep <laughs> sassing your subconscious recklessly then uh well we'll see that's fine but we'll see where that indeci- uh, where that indecision where that strife gets you you can't, you can't shut out all of your emotions. You can, however, cut them out. So, 
Excellence of roleplay. Does anyone feel like anyone else roleplayed particularly well this session? <laughs> uh, I thought Creed did a fantastic thumbs impression. <laughs> I think he was spot on. Wouldn't know he was gone most of the time. Uh, <laughs> any any excellence of roleplay? Um, I think Nick did pretty well with the uh, with the with the towards the end as well. Like you know, just trying to get us all ready and and you know into the right places to share. I'm just like general good captainy kind of roleplay. Uh, okay. Like Ollie's demolitions expert, like uh, I mean, how do I put this? Like embracing the boom. Mm. Embracing the boom. <laughs> <laughs> like the squad definitely feels like it's acting more squad-like, right? It's, it's, it's mm. not just me. You're, you're less like five people who happen to be similar-ish, and more people working alongside each other. Yeah. Uh, there's less I'm going to stab you in the back. Well, no, I'm going to stab you in the front. Less. <laughs> not none. Hey, what I said was in private. None of y'all know about that. That's true. Uh, unless, Creed's of course, play, like, um, unless, of course, you were to get promoted and your sergeant were to get demoted and then people might guess. Sorry, yeah, Nicholas? Mm. Right, Creed's already got roleplay, hasn't he? So I can't do it again. Uh, uh, Creed doesn't have roleplay anymore. Equally as well, it probably won't uh, stay private because obviously, with the way the story is going to progress, where we all get promoted up to various bits in the Legion, we will have access to that sort of thing. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Like, but that's years from now. <laughs> it's like, who fucked me over? Um, uh, Creed uh, instantly comes back in and says, Me, I'll charge, I'll charge. <laughs> that, was, that was me who said that. It was Creed. It was Creed's in spirit. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, that was me. <laughs> it's Creed. It's Creed. We can't give the GM or NPCs any credit. Yeah, and you absolutely are not getting credit for something I did for thumbs. It was Creed's Creed spirit. Well. I'm saying no on that. Creed RP'd it really well. Creed. <sighs> you saying Creed isn't a good roleplayer? I'm saying your brain annoys me with its patterns and method of speech. What? Well, Pattern of speech. That's I did so shat again. Yeah, what are you doing here? Uh, so I make that out to be 135 experience points for session number five. That's 30 points of plot progress. We escaped, and Venus is compliant. That should be a capital C. Compliant! Exactly. No, that was beautiful. Uh, 10 points, character development, Nazim's introspection. 20 points, excellence of roleplay, Nazim's in charge, and Mackie embraces the boom, plus 75 standard. Wow, Nazim really carrying you all on the XP this week. It really was. Well, how much was it again, sir? 135. 135. Sorry, 435. <coughs> 135. Okay, right. 435. You say? Which brings us on to everyone's favourite part of the session. It's the highlight. Young Nicholas, do you have any highlights for that session? Um, oof, uh, through the walls we go. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's through the walls we go. <laughs> Sorry. <coughs> well, the multi melter and. <laughs> yeah, anything else? Um, I feel there's other things. There was a um, thing Creed said at one point that was hilarious, but I don't. Oh, know. I. Uh, no, don't worry. Okay. Wait, wasn't there a Benji about the warp? Uh, yeah. that, so, so it was right, we'll, we'll, we'll get to it in a second. Uh, you're Nicholas. Um, I think that's it. Hello, Doctor. My own, uh, my old friend. Uh, for uh, when we're, <laughs> we're 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 taking off and we see <laughs> the fucking. Right. What's his name on the uh, chimera? Oh, Hello, my talk with my own friend. Just doesn't fly away. So I'm, I'm honestly guy. a little bit glad they're dead. It means I never have to be shamed for not being able to do an Australian accent again. And so the Australians... Why do you think we were trying so hard to keep them alive? <laughs> so the Australians died. Uh, any other Discover new ones. Any other, Is any other uh, highlights here, Nicholas? I think that's it for me. Yeah, what well, you got the zoom news? Uh, Ollie, do you have any highlights for that session? Uh, so Nick's comment, is this a name we should kill? When he hears uh, Morda, whatever his name for the first time. It was a lie. Sorry, what uh, was that? 
is it a name? So Nick heard the name of this guy, the space marine, and then when and he was like, "You should all be familiar." And Nick goes, "Is it a name we should kill?" I, I, didn't, oh, yeah. I didn't say you should all be familiar. I was actually because I'd mentioned it a couple of times at that point, and no one had caught on. And it was maybe the second, third time where Benji went, "Hang on." I know that name. And young Nicholas, without skipping a beat, says, is it a name we should kill? <laughs> <laughs> and then we had Creed's line, which was, Sloopity Woopity, the warp goes sloopity. Oh, yeah. Quote from Zinch. So Creed actually said the second part. I can't remember who said the first Benji part. Benji said the first bit. Yeah, okay, so Benji said the Zinch first bit. said the third part. <laughs> <laughs> um... Anything other else? highlight bum rushing the las cannons and not dying I, I love that because I chose to serpentine I didn't have to roll for dodging or anything no yeah, yeah. you just made it slightly harder for everyone else yes. <laughs> <laughs> I also like you completely got away with that no one called you on it no one even mentioned no. it in the, like no one even condemned you in the post session as I recall <laughs> like, like all, all of the condemnation was was res- at least for people being disobedient was reserved for uh, Mackie and Koya whereas <laughs> Fucking Cusco sits in the back, quietly sassing the sergeant and disagreeing with everything by just not doing it or doing the opposite without arguing, and 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 gets away blameless. Oh, All hail Captain Cusco for next time. <laughs> no. Uh, so the next ones were um, the Manufactorum Melter. Uh, I don't know. Was that was a good dramatic word? Begins with M. Massacre? Yeah, 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 the manufacturer Melter Massacre. You didn't kill anyone with it. I, I did. did. I shot the guy who was holding it. <laughs> okay, so massacring a man for the manufacturer Melter. Yeah, and I guess they didn't go brr when we were just mowing through all those civilians. Well, you weren't using your chainsaws, though. You were just barging. I meant more just barging, as in that's the brr part. We're just moving, and people were just not moving in front of us, but they were trodden underneath us. And uh, blowing up all those those lithic ones. Using my demolition. But I think that one might have already been said. It has not. Uh, So, yeah, uh, seven crack grenades versus dozens of litho golems <laughs> tapping with the pie. If this bad boy can fit so many crack grenades in it. Uh, any other highlights for uh, Ollie? No, that's me done. Thank you. Cool. Benji, do you have any highlights for that session? Wardrico is the worst iron warrior. Brackets can't stay in a fortified position for shit. He stayed in a fortified position. And then the moment the rescue arrived, he rushed out and got his arm bitten off. Because he was completely out of munitions, and the big thing was going to come in and get him. He didn't want to fight it in close quarters. Worst iron warrior. I mean, he is the worst Iron Warrior. I don't know if you re- how well you remember him, ro- him from Rogue Trader, but his like defining personality trait is he has a sense of humor. Very true. It does not go well. I think that's why he gets stuck on garrison duty, in fact, and then heisted by time travelers. Uh, yeah, that, that whole business. <laughs> we were describing that to Callum the other day, saying, like, "Oh yeah, you know, we're we're sorry you weren't into the Rogue Trader campaign, and it, we we like after you you left uh, the little mission we set up for you that was quite simple. We just went off and did some random crap with stealing military supplies from the past in order to sell them at a profit." And he did. Like, I don't think I could see him at the time. But I just imagine the the double slow blink of why didn't you do that when I was in the campaign, Cat? Why are you growling as you throw yourself at things? What is this? Like clearly, it's a bow cry. I think he like jammed his throat on something as he took a flying leap at it. Yeah, oh. so, yeah. Mojko is the worst Iron Warrior. Yes. Brackets. He, uh... The oh, worst of time. I, to... I, I had a... I actually had a bunch in my head. Now I'm just trying to think what they are. Do you want to um, back? Um, yeah, go for it. Damn your tangents. <laughs> I need to take notes, my dude. Uh, Carl, do you have any highlights for uh, this session? Uh, well, I mean, they've pretty much all been taken, to be honest. Ba-bum. Cool. Oh, no, I actually had a descriptive segment for the big psycho chair. Fuck. Oh. Sorry, I just found that in my notes. Uh, Cree, do you have any highlights for this session? Uh, that session? Uh, immediate guilt after condemning the zine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be fun to listen back to that. Any other, any other highlights, Chris? Uh, that's it for me. Cool. And my my big one was honestly going to be the like, fuck you, got mine to the Australians. Uh, but your know, Nicholas got it. I don't think there was a huge amount else that was super, <sighs> super kecky or super memorable. Uh, memorable. 
You well, did think... almost die, for the record. Like if uh, the the bit where you, where you were talking about like taking a, a complete route to go into the building and then try and punch across in order to save like ten meters. I, I was thinking, all right, if they get delayed doing this, this is going to make a lot of subsequent rolls much harder, and they're probably going to be on uh, in the spaceport as it uh, as the lower levels impact the ground, which means you're going to need to start taking off mid car crash, which would be a time. Oh, um, actually, that's a point. Like, yeah. I don't know if it was mentioned, um, but I haven't got a good way of saying it. Um, but saying that I'm going to charge when I get back from smoking, if we haven't decided on anything, get back and it's decided that we charge. <laughs> Squad in decision is the same as Carl decision. Benji, do you have uh, any of your highlights for the end there, then? Time is running out, but there's still time for young Nicholas to receive medical attention, apparently. (laughs) (laughs) I'm glad that didn't come up in the little reports. (laughs) I know they were still dead anyway, because you and I were dead, but we could have saved Australians, perhaps, if you had. I, was I didn't necessarily want them to be dead. Okay. I, was kind of, I was rooting for them to die, but I was thoroughly uh, okay with them being alive if it, if it had come to it. If you had saved a couple of minutes there, then the Australians, because the Australians were basically going to get to the uh, spaceport dramatically slightly after you, whenever you got there. And you got there at the last possible safe moment, which means they got there shortly after the last possible safe moment. So if you had saved those couple of minutes, then yeah, you probably would have saved the Australians. <laughs> But purely through narrative power, not through strategic power. Uh, yes. But then, you know, saving time, efficiency is its own reward. That sounds like someone who hates Australians, you say. Mm. Efficiency is just clever laziness. And then I would have had to find somewhere different to introduce Mondrico, though. So I think it was a decent trade. Any any other highlights, Benji? <laughs> Send the blind man to help the cripple fly the plane. What a phrase. Uh, but they were both both missing the same arm. <laughs> that, but yeah, exactly. Like, so if they sit next to each other... I don't think the fact that Green like, was missing an arm was the main problem with, when he was operating an unfamiliar vehicle full of buttons. What are you talking about? Like, no, up, left, left, like, down a bit, down a bit, press, press. <laughs> Just mashing the buttons on the keyboard. Um... I mean, that's what they ended up doing, actually. Uh, any other any other highlights, Benji? Oh, yeah, because Mondrico couldn't actually really do anything, uh, couldn't see much, because obviously he was off his tits on painkillers, mm. the pilots on drugs. The pilots on drugs. Anything else? I think that's everything. Cool. Any final uh, highlights? Nope. Nope. Right. Cool. In that case, thank you all for a very entertaining session number five. We will. That finished a lot quicker than I was expecting it to. Uh, we will see what we're doing for next week. We might do like a couple of post session things, having fun on the light cruiser. Uh, see, see how things go. Um, I thought we were doing debriefs. Yeah, we'll do the debriefs and the, and the like medals and, and such as well. Uh, I, I, I kind of got in my mind's eye some of those situations where it's like the mockumentary where the guy, the space marine, sits down, the two small chair fidges a little bit, like you know, messes with the mic. It's like, is this all right? Is this all right? <laughs> Documentary crew is like, it's fine, don't worry about it. Now let's ask about your commander. <laughs> Christ! Uh, any final words for the recording? Sudden guilt. <laughs>